Coming at you from the OLR Podcast Studio. Eh, it's really more of a basement. Coming to you from the OLR Basement Studio. But it's still a podcast. Coming to you from the Podcast Basement Studio. Yeah, but you still need to say OLR. Coming to you from the OLR Podcast Basement Studio. Oh, that's way too many words. Coming at you. That's not enough. You still need to say OLR. Let's just start. It's OLR. Welcome oh, to the One Lane Road oh, Podcast. Oh, I almost had you, but you got You me. always get me. You jumped in line. Two weeks in a row, I got to say welcome to the One Lane Road Podcast. Yeah. So don't steal my shine. I don't know what to say now. <laughs> I didn't get to introduce the show. What have you been doing? I just killed the whole mood of the you show. You did. You f- steal my shine. You know how many times I've ever said don't steal my shine in my life? Right that was then. the one. That, that was the that one. one. Right then. Hopefully that'll be the last one. Hey, um... The other morning, my child was crying at 2.30 in the morning. So I got up with him. You beat him. No, no, no. Okay. I got up with him, and a friend of mine that I used to race four-wheelers with had sent me a video of four-wheeler racing from 2003. Mm. And I watched it at 2.30 in the morning. Now, that's not as weird as the fact that he sent it to me at midnight. I don't know what he was up doing watching four-wheeler videos at midnight. Well, maybe. But I watched four-wheeler videos at uh, 2.30 in the morning. And I've been like hooked on four wheeler oh, videos man. ever since. That explains the Fox Racing shirt you have on today. Actually, it's not Fox Racing. Go ahead and read that. Um, I think we read this shirt. This we probably we read this hill build hill yeah. yeah, is hill a word, Dad? I mean, whatever. But did you call me Dad? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I got to remember, and I've been reminiscing about racing four wheelers. I'm I never was good, so don't get. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you about my glory days. But we used to go to a lot of four wheeler races. It's a shame. I was looking forward to hearing about them. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh I was we were racing and me and that guy we we I didn't I never cared if we won. We would always come in like second and third. And he would he would win every now and again, but I never won one. But I would always be out there racing him. I didn't I didn't give a damn who else was on the on the track. I was just racing him, right? And you come up and give him a little love tap. Mm-hmm. Just run up and bump him in the in the rear. Right? Tap ski Nairobi. Yeah, you know, come up and give him a little. Hey, buddy, how are you doing? Just nail him in the rear, right in the rear. That explains your jujitsu. Go ahead. Impregnate him. Right. Yeah. That's what we call it. Do a little impregnation. That's what we'd call it. Well, <clears throat> I went to do that at a race. I got. To, I got to remember. And I went to do that at a race one time, and I remember it real vividly, like. In my head, how cool this was going to be! I've caught him because he passed me like an hour earlier, and I've caught him. I'm going to give him a little tap, a little tap, tap, tappy, and say, "Hey, <coughs> caught you, bitch!" Oh, but you know what happened? It was like it was in slow motion. I seen him throw a stick out from under his left rear tire, and I remember thinking, "Man, that was a big stick for him to have thrown," and it went under my four wheeler. And I thought, "Well, that could cause an issue," and it did. You know what happened to it? It somehow came up and went inside my chain and sprocket. And so it locked my four-wheeler up, me going, I don't know, third gear wide open through the woods. So now I'm in a broad slide in the middle of the woods, and I hit a stump. It throws me off the four-wheeler, and I've got a chest protector on, so I'm thinking, I'm going to be okay. You know, I'm going to hit my chest protector on that tree that's coming. Well, somehow in the air, I rotate, and so now my side, which is fully exposed, slams into the tree oh. now my foilers a kickstart and i'm stuck in the middle of the woods and the only trail that you can get through line of foilers starting to, i can see them coming and so i run over there can't breathe <laughs> oh, oh i'm sick and i flip my foiler back over and i'm trying to kickstart it i'm kicking just as you know it's a real sad kick it's you know i'm just just really my foot's just riding the kickstart to the ground it's nothing nothing like that's going to start it and i know it's not going to start it but i want to give the people that's coming the impression that i'm trying to get out of their way but i can't really and this guy comes sliding up to me and he almost runs into me he's way too close for me to get get the hell out of the way and he goes move 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 and so i'm kind of irritated that you know i wrecked i'm kind of irritated that i had this big head that i was about to you know i, I thought I, in my head i was going to pass him i'm going to win right that didn't happen 
Now I'm sick. Now this asshole's yelling at me, and he's he's way too close, and he knows it. He's too close to me for me to do anything about the whole situation. So you know what I do? I peel my helmet back, and I puked on his four-wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle of the woods. I pulled my helmet back, puked right on the hood of his four-wheeler. You know what he said? Uh-uh. Oh, man. He was so disappointed. He goes, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that guy. Yeah. Yeah, he was he he's, was sad. He's he not, got, the, not the original guy that you're no, trying to catch. No, I didn't yet. know this person. Huh. The person I puked on, I didn't know. Was he stopping to help you? No, no. You know what? You know what he didn't do? Didn't even get off his four wheeler to offer to help. I got off my four wheeler and pulled it out of his way, sat in the woods for a minute, and then I uh, finally got up enough momentum to kick start my four wheeler and I drove out into the field and I got sick again, so I just stopped and let everybody pass me. So he was he, he could have went around you without getting that close. Yeah, yeah. He could if he had just stopped about five foot away from me, I would have kick started my four wheeler and I would have made a big circle and got away from him, so he could just went on. But he got puked on instead. Do you know him? No, no, never seen the guy before. Never seen him after. Don't know where the hell he's at. Could have been from Indiana, as far as I know. You know the guy that sent you the video pretty well. <sighs> yeah, yeah. You want to go do something bad to him? No, no oh. one of my really good friends. Still? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, that was just one of the times. I, me and him was we were we were really battling each other. And I led him into the awfulest batch of woods you've ever seen. Like I thought I was really gonna I was really gonna make up some time here. And he followed me because we were racing and our entire class passed us. But he to me he's not that good of a friend if he never let you you know, like if Ricky, he never, Ricky Bobby never let the magic oh, man ever win the race. Yeah. It wouldn't have mattered. Whenever I was behind, if I was in front, I was so I was so far in front one time. Gosh, I was I was the furthest in front you've ever seen. I was winning this race so hard one time. All I had was a mile and a half left. Only time, only time I've ever been in front, you know, at the end of a race. I start off into a creek. My bottom lower ball joint separates, and it digs into the creek. And I do a cartwheel. My whole four wheeler does a cartwheel out into a creek. I go into the creek head first, and then I have to get drug out by a utility four wheeler. Only four only race. Well, not the only one. One of the only races I'd ever been in that I was winning. I was up in Monterey and hanging limb one time, and I I got the whole shot, and I I made it off down this hill. There's this great big rutted out creek, and I just skipped down it. And I got to the bottom. I thought, damn, I went the wrong way because there was nobody around me. Then I looked up, and then people started coming off of it. So I went on, and I was winning that race like really, really Good, and then there was a photographer pointed at a pointed at a wave like two miles from the end. He said, "Go this way, go this way." He's a photographer. Maybe he knows something. I went off into like four foot <laughs> deep of mud. Just <laughs> it just ramp, and he went click, 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 yeah. click, click, click. Oh, pictures like for days. <laughs> sure, yeah, there's yeah. great photos. Of oh, it there's somewhere. some great photos of it. I've been reminiscing forward racing, and I like it. Yeah, I, I don't know. How, is a what is a handheld VHS tape that he had recorded from? No, no, this was a YouTube from uh, that we yeah, wasn't even it, in this. It race. had to be on a VHS. Oh, though, well, yeah, probably two thousand two. Probably was somebody somehow got it onto YouTube. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I wish we had a two thousand three video you dancing to the Hickman at Cotton Eye Joe's or maybe doing the Hickman. Yeah, I'm not dancing like, to like the, the Fraley Hickman. Shuffle. Yeah. I yeah. like to see the Fraley Shuffle versus the Hickman Slide. Is that what you'd call it, well, Hickman Slide? You I don't know. I slide. didn't slide as much as I did st- stood in place and did the rock star right leg. I like to see it. Yeah. Well, you did see it the other day. I don't know why we. Well, I don't know why I did it for you. Because <laughs> we talked about it on something. Oh, did we? Talked about Kara getting low uh, mm, on the dance floor. That's not. <laughs> Which is not. This is not. I'm just saying. We can talk about us. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about. No, you said the first time you ever seen. No, I, I, I know what you're saying. Let's uh, just not. My apologies. Let's go on. You're going to edit it? No, I'm not going to take any of that out, but just go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I feel like an asshole. Yeah. Do I, though? No, you don't. I know you. I know you Surely will. Surely not. Have you and Kara done the naked challenge together yet? Is that the the TikTok walking out naked? Yeah. Yeah. You done that yet? No. You had not No. Who would do it if it was one of like one of you Oh, two? it would be me. You'd come out swinging? I would come out. What? Hey, baby, have you seen my uh, washcloth? I'd do the washcloth. Oh, That's the, washcloth. Where I, the old washcloth. Where's, where's it at? Where, what's under my washcloth? 
Would she move it to see? You know what she'd say? Uh-uh. She'd say, I don't know where it's at. And she'd go back to doing whatever it was she was doing. But what if she looked and seen? What if she looked and she seen it? She'd go, I don't know where your washcloth's at. You better just go back to doing what you were doing. Oh. Uh-oh. Okay. But what if what if she came out and you were sitting there? It'd be a surprise. I'd be I'd be surprised. Would you drop what you're doing? Oh, would, you, yeah. would you stop watching four wheeler races? I'd stop I'd stop anything. <laughs> I'd I'd stop breathing if that was a part of it. <laughs> All right. I didn't know the naked challenge is even a thing till today. It popped up on YouTube. There's like a whole my sponsored ads are TikTok. <coughs> yeah. All the sponsored ads that come up on my videos are TikTok. Okay. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. We haven't done it at the Kennedy you going household. To? No. You going to try it? Mm-mm. I don't think that's something married people do. I think that's something boyfriends and girlfriends do. Maybe. I think, as a, I think at this point in time, if you're married and you do the naked challenge, then your wife really doesn't understand what's going on. You know, if you're... If you're in college and your girlfriend walks out naked, you know what's about to happen. It's still a big deal then. No, it's it? a big deal. Now your wife walks through the living room carrying a load of laundry naked. You don't even recognize what's happening. No, because I, if I'm afraid I'll get that close, you'll put me doing laundry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> why. It's a trick. You, it's a trick. Let's, let's fold this laundry and then we'll go do something. No, oh, okay. or, no it's like, I'm just carrying this in here and we'll get to do it. Then, then you do it and you're like, all right, fold those clothes now. And you know what? I'm always afraid that it's going to be the basket of the kids' clothes because if it, if, the if they're mine, you know, there might be 10 pieces in it. Yeah. If they're Kara's, there might be 15. If they're the kids, there's a 1,000 in a basket. There's a 1,000 pieces of clothes in one basket. <clears throat> I hate being – I hate – when she says, if you beat me home, get all the clothes out of the dryer and hang them up, please. I'll, I'll put it in first gear and drive as slow as I possibly <laughs> can. I hate it. Yeah. Because my clothes, I'm like, oh, those, there's my seven shirts. I can put them on a hanger. Yeah. But the little kid's clothes, you know, I don't know where she hangs this. I don't know where she folds this at. I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm worthless. I can put everything up of hers where it needs to go now. However, I don't know what needs of hers can be dried and what can't. Because she'll have a half a load. That can be dried and half a load that has to be hung up. And I don't know which is which. Joke on me last night. I, I yelled at her because I thought it, Jack was on my arm. And I thought, oh, he's he's ripped a good one. He's, yeah. he's, I said, Lindsay, come here. I, I can't get up. I need you to come in here. And uh, Jack's crying. I don't know why Jack's crying for. <laughs> and I handed, it, handed him off to her. And I said, well, I think he, I think he might have pooped. She goes, and you couldn't change it? I don't know where the wipes are at. She goes, look down, shit all over my arm. <laughs> Didn't even know it. <laughs> Had to get up anyway. Damn it. What were you doing? You weren't watching basketball. Unless you was watching old tapes. I was watching the 2013 finals game mm-hmm. six last night. Ray Allen shot. I just need my sports back. You, 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 um, you savage animals that don't, know, don't like sports. I hate you. <laughs> I don't give a shit that there's nobody playing a sport right now. <laughs> I'd watch the Seattle Mariners. Versus the Cincinnati Bengals, well, whoever they are, Reds. Yeah, I'd watch it. I'd watch the Mariners versus the Reds right now. I'd watch a 165 game series Mm-mm. in four days. No, Mm-mm. no. I don't give a shit that nobody's playing basketball. I couldn't care less about football. They're playing a 2K challenge right now. Is somebody's playing video games and the everybody's N- watching? The NBA players are. That's all. That's what Waylon was watching when I left the house. That's. There's a lot of money in people playing video games and other people watching it right now. However, I never in my life want to watch somebody else play video game. I always hated being the other guy. Like if it was a two person game and there was three of us, I hated sitting. <laughs> yeah. I hated sitting and watching. You know, you know, millionaires or people watch video games oh, posted yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. What a what in the world? That's, that just shows you what world we're living in. You remember when everybody said that you're wasting your time playing video games that you're yeah. never going to mount anything? That? There's millionaires that just play video games now. You think they got girls? Yes. There is there is groupies to that. Now You got to be shitting me. No, I shit you not. Groupies to video games. Oh, yeah. Nerds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Video game groupies. I don't know what to call them. Video game vixens? Or maybe... Uh, maybe... Sounds sensual. Yeah. Sounds uh, provocative. I'm trying to come up with something like 
animated hose or something like that. I don't know what they call them. But you ever watching anime porn? No. No. We're the nest. You can tell the truth. I am telling the truth. I have not. Neither have I. Yeah, sure. You brought it up. Yeah, so. I've never watched anime porn. I've never watched midget porn. I've never watched... Uh... They pretty much narrowed the list down, <laughs> didn't <laughs> <laughs> What are you saying? My goodness. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Happy birthday to uh, Chris Rains. Yeah. How old is he now? 40? I don't know. Not his mama. I my candle. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Glad you thought so. Yeah, I spit my coffee back into my cup. <laughs> Chris Rains, I saw it on the uh, on the interweb, as Lucas would call it today. Mm-hmm. We and our li- new listener, Jalen uh, Hunt. I want her name to be Jalen so bad. I'm mad about it. I'm mad at her mom and daddy, really. Because mm-hmm. Jalen just ain't an out name. An- a name I could pronounce. <laughs> Struggled with that. Yeah. She's listening. She tweeted us uh, last week, and uh, I thought that I um, – want you talk to fill the time for real quick? Well, I thought you were going somewhere, so, or I would have been. I thought you were trying to do something there. I so. am. I don't know where her tweet went. Okay. She texted – or she messaged last week while we were recording. Remember I mentioned it? Yeah. I don't remember what she said, though. But she tweeted right after. Uh... Well, I, while while you're looking for that, I want to tell everybody that your beard is coming in really nicely. It's the it's the best I've ever seen it. That's saying something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's that's that's pretty good. It's uh, like I was telling you though, you got some you got some corners you need to round off. You look a little squared off in the corner. I look like my head looks like cement. It looks like a cinder block a little bit. Yeah, cinder block. That's what I was going for. Yeah, I thought it was. You know. I'm dumb sometimes. <laughs> I don't like the way it, I just get pissed off. We've talked about beards a thousand times on here, but it, I I hate when other people have nice looking beards and mine looks like a, you know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's yours. You can shave yours into a actual like hard line, hard edges now if you wanted to. Everybody else has got those nice little shadows. Yeah. And up to you, almost just, up to your eyes. And everybody has smooth looking beards. Yeah. And then I just, I get this stuff that I don't, I don't want. To say what it looks like, it's like we said off air a while right. ago. But the it gr- does. The girl who cuts my hair kept giving me tips and tricks about how to make my beard look better, and she would give them randomly, you know, uh, unsolicited, really. Yeah. So I finally just took the hint that it wasn't looking good and it wasn't working for me, so I just shaved it off. It looks good tonight. Yeah, it's because I shaved it off. <laughs> no, I, oh, your beard. Yeah, I thought you meant your hair. No, it's just. It looks good. Your hair looks good. What'd you do to it? You just some, washed is it. Is that Vidal Sassoon you're using? Mm-mm, Alberto V5. Is that Pantene Pro-V? Alberto V5. Did you ever have an orgasm in the shower when you used to use a... Uh, herbal Essence? Herbal Essence? Oh, every time. You got Every time. And that was... Uh, how did that sound? What? <laughs> when, you, when you washed your hair with... Well, it sounds like this. <laughs> What was the shampoo? Herbal oh, Essence. Herbal Essence. And what? Yeah. Remember the girls in the shower? You don't remember those commercials? I do remember them. I can't remember if there was any sound to it or they not. Surely there weren't. Yeah. FCC would all out any sound, would it? Yeah. Oh, oh. They, well, I mean, they, yeah, of course there was sound. Well, let's, let's hear one. Hold on just a second. But you made your sex noise on here a few weeks ago, if you remember. No, I don't remember. I told Randy the other day, I told him, I said, you know, it was the weirdest part about that podcast that as soon as those microphones turn off, I don't know a damn thing I said Yeah, that's <laughs> in it. the last hour. We get like dementia every time we <laughs> yeah. hit post. Jalen uh, quoted a tweet and said, I've made it now, y'all. I was mentioned on the OLR podcast, episode 140. FYI, I'm late to the party and I've been binge listening from the beginning. But skip to that one because I had a feeling at DRE Kennedy underscore 83 would say something about me. LOL. Seriously awesome podcast. Oh, thank uh, you very much. Ah, uh, shucks. I always love new listeners. I don't even know where the it's nice audio. Sound. I don't even know where the sound comes from now. It's a pretty cool Windows 95 setup we got down here. What do you have it even run off of? I don't know. I don't know where. I don't even know where the sound's coming from. But there was sound off of a Herbal Essence commercial there. Would you like to talk about your sex noises or Miss Hunt 
talking about our podcast, new listeners. Which one you want to talk about? Your sex noises? Let me repeat the questions if you're struggling to comprehend the words coming <laughs> yeah. out of my mouth. I don't know why I couldn't understand what you said. Is there an option C? Because <laughs> I don't know what the first two meant. <laughs> I couldn't under- even comprehend what you said. Oh, no, you struggled on that one. Yeah. So I'm listening now. I apologize. Well, the, we were going nowhere with the sex. Yeah, in it the was, shower. Yeah, it was going nowhere. Not just but younger people may not remember. Everlessons had the sex sounds. Shower. Uh, I'm just glad for new listeners though. And I told the <laughs> messenger back, and I said, "Hey, I would, I would, I would have read that tweet. I didn't see it till I got back to my truck. So there you go. You've not made it. You're with the rest <laughs> yeah. of the. Uh, yeah, you're actually. You know, you're going downhill. You're going to be blackballed, like. You know, like like saying you. It listen- only goes it it only goes further down from here. Do you remember when people used to say, like, used to be in like a club, like they didn't want to admit they watched pro wrestling? You know, they're yeah. like, oh yeah, well, hey, did you did you watch the SummerSlam last night? Because it would be you'd be made fun of. Uh huh. Jane, well, that's really the group you're in. Yeah. People saying, you know, the One Lane Road podcast. You know, I don't really listen to those guys. Uh-huh. They may be listening to what, on the way to work. They don't post on social media about us. Uh-huh. They don't wear our t-shirts. They don't wear our hats. They don't wear our fanny packs. They don't wear our we socks. We should do fanny packs and socks. Well, if they're coming back. Socks, maybe not. Yeah. But man, one lane roll. Socks are fan. coming back. One. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> one lane roll po- podcast fanny packs. You can keep your steroids, your cocaine, your brass knuckles. Yeah. Your like your eight balls. Your you know you can hide it from the cops. <laughs> 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 yeah. All that stuff. There you go. If you like drugs and hiding it and conspiring, yeah, uh, and being sneaky, you can you can put you can you can put snacks in them for later. You can put whatever you want to in them, really. Or one lane roll podcast fanny packs. Yeah, I like it. I wonder how much it costs to get some. Made. Probably too damn much. You know what? You'd have to sell them for too damn much. I don't think our listeners really want that many fanny Mackie's packs. Mackie's got one. I've got two. God dang! I had. You one. know how many we'd probably sell. Just based off that, three. Two to me and one to Mackie. <laughs> uh, I had a Hulk Hogan fanny pack when I was little. Yeah, but it only had one pocket, didn't it? It just had the po- the big pocket. Probably. Mine was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when I was little. It had one big pocket. It was green as shit, and I loved it. I wish I had it back, and I'd wear it today. How many pockets tomorrow. do you need on one of those? You know, the ones that my other ones got, like three in the front, one in the back. It's got one on either side. It's got them everywhere. It's like tied stuff in it. It's a lot. Yeah, it's like the MacGyver. You don't want the you don't want uh, the people that you know, you got a bunch of pockets to hide stuff in, right? But you know what? If somebody steals fanny pack, they got all your pockets. If they steal it, they took all the pockets. They, they're going to have time later to look through every one of them. So you really didn't hide anything, right? You only hit it in your, from yourself, and that's why you never take it off. You know what you got to do is you just got to keep looking through all the pockets to remember where in the hell you put that one thing you're looking for. <coughs> So maybe it's a bad idea. I don't know. I don't like it now. I'm never going to wear it again. <laughs> it's a lot of things in this. Um, there's a lot of Facebook games been going on. Yeah. Right. Um, a lot of things of the, you know, remember we did the one thing at the concert, named 10 bands. Mm-hmm. One of them's a lie. Right. We got into one thing. I'll, I'll, I'll give you two. Okay. I'm going to give you two that I put on Facebook the other day. It was famous people. Somebody put a thing about famous people. Okay. And, my, and it says, you've met 10, mm-hmm. one's a lie. My sister-in-law, Heather's like, D- Dustin, did you invent this game? Because I'm pretty sure nobody else knows 10, 10 famous, famous people. people. So I'll let you know. See how good you know your old podcast partner here. Right. The first one I posted was Hulk Hogan, Catherine Bach, which is Daisy Duke, Kevin Durant, Chris Stapleton, Tim McGraw, Dwayne Wade, Shaquille O'Neal, Dell Earnhardt Jr., Stephen Curry or the Nature Boy Ric Flair? Which one of those have I not met? Uh, go back up and say your four, the fourth and fifth one again. Chris Stapleton and Tim McGraw. And who was right before Stapleton? Kevin Durant. I don't think you met him. You think I've met the other ones? Uh huh. You are wrong. Ah. I met Kevin Durant briefly in Memphis, 2016, ah. with like a 30 second conversation. Oh, ah, okay. After shoot around, before the game that day, we're walking down. Uh, we're on Beale Street, me and Waylon, and Waylon's got a picture he wants to sign, and I and all the all the Curry didn't go to shoot around. That's why we didn't meet Curry that trip, or we didn't. He yeah, he didn't go to shoot around. We were late getting into town. We're like the players come into town or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, is the answer is the answer marked? It's it's Curry, Steph Curry. Oh, okay. 
So it's the same trip, right? But we didn't get there early enough. Like where a lot of the fans meet down in Memphis or whatever. Uh, Lindsay couldn't leave Cookville in time. I told her I said what time we need to leave. So we get there, and I see a lot of other dads with their sons. I say, hey, what did we miss? Like, oh, it was great when they got here. And when they come off the team bus, Curry and Durant come over here and took pictures and signed autographs, and they were awesome. Mm. So the next day when Durant's walking back over from shoot-around, his security guard's, like, telling people to get away. And I just said – Oh, yeah. And they, and you – did you wind up having to – I just said, hey, man. Yeah. You know, because you never know unless you ask. Right. I said, hey, man, this is the second time we've came five hours away for him to try to meet you. I said, do you think you can uh, sign this picture for him? I say hi. And so. he stops and dead is in his tracks while the security guard's pushing him in the back the whole time. He's like, man, I'm not that important. Let me see that picture. Yeah. So he signs the picture for Waylon, hands it back to him, and he's reaching with his Sharpie. So Kevin Durant does some dumb things now, but that was pretty cool of him. Is he... Is he like really? I know, obviously, he's taller. Plays in the NBA, but is he like super tall, or is it just how he's skinny 6'11. he is? Six eleven, and his legs look like this ink pen. Right? Here. He's just so skinny when he, you see him play. There was this, there was this uh, compilation of like I think it was called uh, NBA. He's not human. Popped up on YouTube, mm-hmm. and it, he was in there like twelve times. You know, just doing some crazy he's shots. Freakish. Yeah. But I, I, and he looks so skinny, like, dude, don't hurt that guy. Yeah. There's some monsters. His legs are tiny. That and it's a Takumbo. Yeah. He's a beast. He used to not be. He was skinny too. Really? He came in, yeah. And then there's that uh Embiid. Mm. Is that his name? Joel Embiid, yeah. Yeah. He is a monster. He's a big guy. He's a big dude. But Durant is he he's skinny as hell to be six yeah. eleven. So Hogan I met in Clearwater, uh-huh. Catherine Bach, Daisy Duke. I met her twice at the up top at the Legends Corner, uh, Legends Corner after the CMT Awards in 2005 when Shooter was playing his Put the O Back in Country album release party, mm. which was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stapleton, I met before he got famous. Well, before he got mainstream famous. I didn't even know who he was really at the time. And then years later at the George Jones Museum. Tim McGraw randomly at the, at the NFL draft last year uh-huh. when I thought we were just going to watch Rich Eisen record a episode of his show and Tim McGraw was the guest there. Dwayne Wade in Memphis, of course, Shaq. Dale Jr. was the, was the answer everybody guessed on that one. I knew you'd met him. I couldn't remember the story, but I knew you'd met him. Yeah, the story is... I, know, I, remembered, the, I remembered the Steph Curry and Kevin Durant, but I couldn't remember who... Which was which. Which was which. Flair I'd met in Georgia at a convention. Uh, the Dale Hart Jr. one, Jeff Mackey had called me one day, and he said, um, hey, I'm going to this Predators thing tonight to make, meet Pecorini and meet Carlos down uh-huh. there, uh, exchange some stuff. Um, uh, you want to go, not drugs, yeah. but, uh, well, Pecorini was, <laughs> oh yeah. Hockey player, Pecorini. Yeah. So, Pecorine. Uh, <laughs> Pecorine. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so I was like, no, nah, I don't really care nothing about hockey. I'm, I'm yeah. probably just stay here. And he calls me back. Hey man, Dexter McCluster and Taylor Lewan are doing an autograph signing at a, um, cell phone store somewhere outside of Nashville. I was like, I've met them, you know, yeah. probably just gonna stick around the house. He called back and he was like, all right, shithead. I don't know what it's going to take for me to. Get you down here. Get somebody to come with me tonight. Get you to come with me. But Dale Jr. is unveiling his new car at the Wild Horse Saloon. I was like, well, that's kind of cool. So I was like, we'll, we'll go. I'll go down there for that. Yeah. So they, it's on the dance floor of the Wild Horse Saloon. And I'm sitting there, and I'm having a Jack and Coke. And then it's over, and he's just kind of mingling. And um, Jeff had taken a baseball and a Titans helmet in because we didn't really plan on right. you know, sports memorabilia stuff. But he'd had those with him. So, uh, Old Crow Medicine Show was there singing. They're good friends with, with Junior. And then he's like, then I said, you going to go talk to him? He goes, no, no, man. I don't want to bother him. I was like, he's like 10 feet from us, right? I mean, there he is. Why would we not talk to Dale Junior? He's a really personable guy. Yeah, too. he was awesome. Yeah. And then I was like, hey, man, I hate to, I hate to be weird about this, but was like my buddy had these. So we just came from a Titans event. And I said, I've, I'd met the guys already here. I got a Titans mini helmet. I was like, you're not going to not get him to sign something, right. you know? And that's just what I had on. I wasn't going to, it's either, you know, you find a coaster on the, on the table, <laughs> right. which has probably been fine. He's like, well, I guarantee you I've never signed a Titans helmet, but he was cool. And so, yeah, the, they, he was very open on the JRE podcast about his battles with, uh, brain trauma. Yeah. Oh, where he'd wrecked so many times. And, uh, he's, he's a very open you know, very open guy. I really liked him. And he's not the, he's not the guy that you see portrayed in the media. Sometimes they used to portray him as kind of an asshole. And he may have been, you know, yeah. but I believe it was, may have just been nerves or something, but 
He, uh, Tough he's, shadow. Yeah, he, the, and he talks about that a lot, too. He's really open. Good guy. So, uh, I, I've i always wanted to meet, like, the two people. And so the second one I done had Chipper Jones involved. Right. But I don't like baseball. But right. I, I think Chipper Jones is pretty cool. Uh, I don't watch NASCAR necessarily, but I think Dale Jr. is really cool. So those two yeah. I wanted to meet. So the second 10 options were Travis Tra- – because I got to think, I was like, shit. I've met so many people. Why right. stop at 10? I'll have some more fun with it. Travis Tripp, Jesse James Decker, Dirks Bentley, Jason Aldean, Brett Favre, Chipper Jones, George Strait, Rantley Gilbert, Ashley McBride, and The Undertaker. I would think you've met all of them. There's one I haven't. Really? Uh, I'm, Jesse James Decker, maybe? No, I met her at a Titans charity event. Uh. Her and Eric t- together. Hotter than hell. If you ever want to, if you ever want to feel like an ugly son of a bitch, stand in the middle of Eric and of Jerry, either Jesse one of those two. They are so pretty. Oh my god, yeah, so pretty. Yeah, she posts BDE about him every time, every chance she gets to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes me sad. Oh, well, it makes you sad. Yeah, good looking <laughs> and, and packing. Uh, I don't know who else you've met. The Undertaker, I know. I've met the Undertaker twice. Yeah. I met Ashley McBride during CMA Fest. Yeah, I met George Strait before a show with the Ryman. Uh huh. Chipper Jones at a book signing that Travis Tritt. I met Travis Tritt. I was five feet from George Jones. Like I told uh-huh. him, I think I've told that story a hundred times on this podcast. Five feet from George Jones. News Channel Two grabs him before I could talk to him. Walking away and I see Travis Tritt. I'm like, Mr. Tritt, you know, how you doing? So personable, so nice. I'd heard mixed reviews about him over the years. Uh-huh. But it's I had a digital camera with me before I had a smartphone. Just before I got my first iPhone. And he's like and I asked the one lady on the in the crowd that didn't know how to use one. Took about four shots, and I was like, "Look, man, I'm not going to waste any more of your time." Because he kept saying, "No, we're going to get a good one." Yeah, I remember that. On yeah. the fourth time, I was like, "Travis, that's I appreciate good. you, man. Yeah, that's good. Get back to your conversation. This yeah. lady sucks at life." Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Dirk Bentley. I met at the same time I met Daisy Duke at that Shooter album release. That's when I asked. I him, thought you might have knew him from before, whenever he was dating somebody we knew. No, uh, but I asked him about that. Yeah, and he flat out lied about her and her BFF. Really? Because he had a girl with him. Oh, okay. And I was like, because he dated her not long before that. Oh, okay. You know? And I was like, well, maybe he wasn't supposed to be dating her at the time. So I said, do you know Lisa J. Arnett? He's like, oh, she dated my friend Jeff. You know, I love Lisa J. Where's she at? I was like, she's down at Roberts trying to get a friend of ours uh, to leave. Uh-huh. And he was like, well, tell her I said hello. And I always wondered how much, how full of shit Lisa J. Part. was about right. it. Uh-huh. But not the other person. I believe that one. Right. And I mean, because I thought it was true. And uh, well, I've seen pictures, so yeah, I know. Yeah. Since then, I've seen pictures. Yeah. But when he flat out knew who Lisa J was, uh-huh. and then years later, that was in 05, and then about four years ago, Lisa J took me and Lindsay to Indiana to a show and went backstage with him. Mm-hmm. He, he knows the hell out of her. Right. He's a nice guy, too, isn't he? He's tiny. He Look, got, we got really? That, tiny, tiny. I took him a large One Lane Road podcast shirt. It wasn't even close to fitting him. Nah, he's a medium all day, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, Jason Aldean I met the same day I met George Strait Yeah it, It's kind of a throwaway Wasn't it You know I've met him Yeah That's kind of what it was Yeah you go on with it Because it's you know Jason Aldean He's either your cup of tea Or he's not Yeah And he's not Met Brett Favre At a Orca Tailgating party On UT campus Did you tell Did you tell him by chance If he's going to take a naked picture Take his Crocs off No I just said Use somebody else's hi. Use somebody else's Penis. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next time, you know, ask one of your buddies to <laughs> take it and send it. So, uh, the answer there was was uh, Brantley Gilbert. Oh, I didn't. Know. I I dislike him so much. I did yeah. not even hear his name whenever uh, you said it. If if Brantley Gilbert was was out in my shed, still in a toolbox, I I'd, I'd be like, yeah, but I'd have to meet Brantley Gilbert. Yeah, right. Just take it. Go ahead. Stop making shitty music. Thank you. Brantley, you suck, but your buddy's worse. (laughs) (laughs) Tell Colt Ford to quit making music, too. Seriously. Yeah, Yeah, both of you. You can keep singing every now and then. Go be a construction worker. I don't hate Brantley Gilbert like you do. I hate the way he talks. I hate the way he looks. But I do like I don't listen to him talk, so I don't know. But I hate every song I've ever heard of his. One of my buddies in college absolutely loved him. And And I listen to him because every time we get in his truck, that's what he was playing. But man, I hated it so much. It's bad. I mean, it is. But, I just, but I'd like, I'm not going to sit here and be a hypocrite. I'd like some of his older stuff. This was. Maybe t- eight songs total. I this think. was like 2006 and seven. So, I mean, it was like really old stuff for his. He hadn't been singing long. Not that that gives him any excuses. But I find that these guys that suck, 
don't suck, I guess. A lot of people like their music. They're millionaires. But I found out a lot of these guys that are doing the mainstream thing, their first album is usually pretty good. Yeah. Oh, Most, yeah. Uh, That's how they get there, right? They did something really good once. And then they let the machine fuck them. Yeah. All right. Machine gets them. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even kiss them. Yeah. John Prine did pass away after we talked about it. Mm. And that's, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't know John Prine for several, several years. I actually found John Prine's music because I'm such a big fan of Chris Knight's music. Right. And Chris Knight always. It's a big, you know, he's, big fan. Steve Earle and John Prine were his two biggest influence, two of his biggest influences. So I started looking at John Prine. And man, when you follow that style of music, you don't know what kind of influence that guy's got on the Americana country. Right. Like people that are real artists, you know. I've seen Jason Isbell, <coughs> Margot Price, and Shooter Jennings, and just who's who people. I mentioned, mentioned John Prine. Have you ever know? Did you ever watch uh, <sighs> Pawn Stars? That Las Vegas Pawn Stars. I never watched the uh, Chicago, Vegas, Cincinnati. Let me show you any edition of. John John Prine looks just like the old man from Pawn Star. Oh yeah, maybe I do know who that. Yeah. Is. Does this screen work today or? Yeah. What What's happening over here on this screen? Oh, nothing's happening over there on that one. <clears throat> so you're gonna do it on your laptop? Nope. I'm bring it over there. Does look old man? Yeah, I can see it. He looks a little like John Prine. Yeah. That's weird, ain't it? Yeah, a little bit. I can see it. Yeah. So glad that it didn't not. Looking, Lindsay makes the worst. He looks so just like so and so, and it never looks anything. Never, like never, ever. You, uh, you ain't far off on that one. Yeah, but I guess you know John Prime. Yeah, I mean, I can see it. <laughs> yeah, right there. Why wouldn't it have just clicked on it? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's almost the exact same. Uh, <coughs> yeah, quite exact, a bit. Yeah. So this uh, stuff's getting. You don't know what you don't know what though. I mean, you know, you don't know where this stuff. It's two weeks in a row we've had to talk about a musician. It's the the, the old uh, virus has got. I don't like it. No. Uh, clear up a couple things. You know, Tana Ledbetter asked last week. She said, "Uh, that one album that you can't live without." Mm-hmm. I, I completely missed. And you know, Sinners Like Me is the one of the greatest. Albums ever the Eric Church right. debut album is that may be my one. That's pretty good. I love that album, top to bottom. This Not a bad song. Hard. Nothing bad. <laughs> All right. It just it just hit me this week. Like after we recorded that show, I was like, "How was Sinners Like Me?" Not my number one answer. Adobe Sessions is a pretty good damn record, but man, that uh, Sinners Like Me would be a lot of people's number one. Listen to this track list on Sinners Like Me from 2006. Before she does, Sinners Like Me, How About You, These Boots, What I Almost Was, The Hard Way, Guys Like Me, Lightning. Boy, Lightning's a good song, isn't it? Can't Take It With You, Monster. Pledge Allegiance to the Hag, Two Pink Lines, that was Monster. Uh, Living Part of Life, that's it. That's, I mean, that's, that's a good album. I guess that's my number one. That's a good album. 2006. Boy, that was a long time ago. He's been around a long time. That two pink lines hit. Yeah. That hit. About the time, wasn't it? <laughs> it was right <laughs> around the time. Yeah. That two pink lines come into my life. Uh-huh. 14 years ago. Mm-mm-mm. Damn Hell of a record. What? Your boy is a teenager. Yeah. Mustache and all. Oof. Moustache. Moustache. Boy, we are getting old, buddy. I feel it every day. I do too. Me too, buddy. Oh, so apology accepted? Yeah. Apology accepted? Yeah. Got yeah. an email this week, not oh, yeah. mentioning any names? Yeah, not mentioning any names. Got a got an email, apology accepted. I'll apologize too. Maybe it hit me wrong. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to look at it like this, and our listeners, other than a couple, probably are going to be lost like last year's Easter egg when they hear this, yeah. so we won't go into depth about it. About it. But... If you hear us two goofball jack offs every week, yeah. even if you don't know us, uh-huh. you know, you listen to our show and probably he probably feels like he knows us uh-huh. more than we know him. Right. And we're not very serious characters on right. this. So I'm thinking it, he probably thought I can if the, if any two people can take a joke, it's these two. And I can 
except for on one thing. And I've never been able to. I've never been able to take a joke about my weight. <laughs> I've never been able to. Well. There's just been so many people said so many shitty things about me, about my weight <laughs> while I was in college that I have got this like hard shell around it and I can't, I can't get past it. Yeah, I'm with you. I can't. I don't know what it is. And I'm sorry. You hit you hit that one button. You couldn't. <laughs> and con- I can't take. And and text taking things out of text context wise yeah. is different. If a person comes yeah. up and says something to you face to face, you can tell right off the bat whether whether they're kidding, they're or serious not. or yeah. not. Context over text is is yeah. Uh, you can't tell any inflection. Yeah, yeah. That's you my fault. You, you, can't, you can't pick up on a wink, week, and Mm-mm. I hate. I, I, I'm a I'm a big advocate. I hate when I have to LOL somebody. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not a big I, I'd use them because literally everybody uses yeah, LOLs. A lawler. You know, um as as a gen, older gentleman I work with, refer to it as for years, lots of laughs. <laughs> well, it's laugh out loud. Yeah. But I don't I don't always laugh out loud, but I have to put L O L or ha ha or mm-hmm. otherwise you're gonna think I'm a bigger prick than I am. All right. Than I am. Yeah. Because I am a prick. <laughs> Sometimes. So that's not that's where you're supposed to console me and yeah say, I was just gonna let you go on though you know well all right uh, did you see this <laughs> there, I don't know how real it is but there's a thing on Facebook about um, no I didn't see it you don't know that there's a there's a uh, this is supposedly posted on some liquor store and it said COVID nineteen is some real shit yeah cover your effing mouth. Yeah. Shut the F up. Buy your shit and leave immediately. Exactly. Absolutely no titty or sock money. Right. Stand back at least, at least six feet, player. Uh huh. Store capacity limited to five MFers at once. Yep. You cough, you die. Uh huh. Drink responsibly, YOLO. <laughs> I like it. That should be absolutely everywhere. Yeah, that should be everywhere. Yeah. Is and that- you know, you know, at the liquor store, they're getting a lot of titty money. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, especially no, in the hood. Especially where that, where I'm assuming. <laughs> Where I'm assuming that that one was posted. Here we go, there's profiling lot, folks lot again. Of, of, hey, you're the one that made the voice, so you profiled first. I didn't. You I did. said playa. Uh huh. You. I mean. And then uh, mo- mfers. I say mfers a lot. Yeah. I don't think I'm who you're. Uh, that demographic you're shooting at there, playa. Yeah. 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 You did it. You did it though. Did I though? Yeah. yeah uh-huh. did. All right. So you're thinking that may be in. There's cop- some titty. There's some titty money. Happens in Compton, there. yeah, in Long Beach, yeah. Oakland area. Yeah, they're not carrying a pocket maybe book. Rivergate. Maybe that's Rivergate. I don't know. They're maybe. not carrying a pocketbook there because you know somebody might snatch it. So it, you keep your money. I think there's titty. bars on the windows in that liquor pa- store. I would imagine. I would imagine. You got a lot of hatred in your heart. No, no. you do because you I'm know, I'm probably madder than what. Well, can we rewind back to maybe I don't know three hours ago when you no. called me that word? No, I'm not going to say what you said. I'm just yeah. saying, praying for you. Yeah, prayers. It was probably too much. You did call me. Uh, you did call me a, a, a bitch after it. <laughs> you did. I little, think little bitch. Yeah, I think I think you did. I think you did. I meant it. Yeah, I apologized immediately after I sent it. It was just hard. It was just harsher than what I meant. I immediately regret that. I text. immediately regretted that. What's I thought, funny is I thought I, that's in print. That's in print. That uh, was hard. I was coming through Whitleyville, so I actually got the uh, the text that said, that is such a harsh word. I apologize for that. It didn't make me laugh, though. Then I was like, what's he talking about? Then I was like, ah, oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, There's you got the, the other. You got the apology prior to the. Came out of whack. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, I'm finna ask for prayers for you on this show for the hate. H-H. H-H. In your heart. In your heart. Yeah. Playa. He didn't call me the N-word. That, that, no. <laughs> that, may be, <laughs> that may be where y'all thought I went with that yeah. after I said finna ask. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'll clear no. that up right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, we don't have white hoods on down here in the mm-hmm. podcast basement studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, you ever said, you ever heard Theo Vaughn? No. He said, uh, he said, I don't say the N word unless you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I hear if you drop the ER and add an A, it's okay. Yeah. I don't think so. If you're Eminem, you can say it. No, I don't think you can. Eminem has said it. Really? He raps so fast, you don't know. Yeah. He must have. I think if anybody can say it, it's Eminem, right? For sure. If anybody can, he can. However, I don't think, I, I still don't think he's, I don't think he's got the pass from everybody. I don't think he does. Well, maybe his little circle. I think there's some people out there that would disagree. I don't that, think so. And that he probably shouldn't what do you say know? it to them. What do you know? You don't ever leave Herman Springs. That's true. I, I, 
It's been a long time since I left Hermit Springs. Hey, where'd you I don't go? leave this house much. Where'd you go yesterday? You shopped. Like the little bitch you are. Yeah. Oh, uh, Gross, Bill Martins. Or, uh, Whatever it's called. Who cares yeah. what that stupid yeah. generic name is? It's Bill Martins. Yeah, Bill Martins. All day long. Yeah. Mackie burns you. Not to Walmart. Ma- Mackie burns you on text. What is that? He said, I recorded a podcast and I was like, nah, look, has got a grocery shop. He's like, where are Melvin's? <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we always say it's the only place you yeah. go. <laughs> we don't hate on Melvin's man; it's the best. I would say, uh, hell, if Melvin had if Melvin had meat, I'd go down there and buy it. I mean, they got everything else. They, I mean, I can get my nails and screws and a exactly. steak. I'd come to the house. Hey, carrot, carrot. <laughs> Where Melvin? Hey man, don't hate on Melvin's. You get a bologna sandwich, a bag of chips, and a Sprite twelve ounce drink. You don't have to be Sprite. I mean, any twelve ounce drink for like two dollars. Yeah, two fifty, and you're out the door. Then they tell you how good your podcast is also mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. They'll, and if you really need to, you can go get a wheelbarrow, a ladder, and some screws. I'm uh, afraid you need, you need a new key for the mat. You can get it. You get there. You get it while you're down there. Hey, did you lose your uh, sockets? Did you lose some of your sockets? They're right over there. They're in that aisle. What aisle is that? The second one. They're in the second aisle. I'm not going to hate on the girl. I'm hey, not, did you need some plumbing supplies? They're nope. against the back wall. But though. if I did, I'd go to Melvin's. And if you want to come around to the aisle right before that, you can get all your electrical supplies. I like to go ahead and stop talking to Melvin's because they don't pay us shit to talk about Melvin's on this show. No. So, uh, And Melvin's got more money than us combined. <laughs> and Probably all of our listeners. All of our listeners, combined. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you don't pay us, we're not talking about you on his show anymore. That's a new rule. I don't know, man. You talk about a lot of people and none of them pay us. Some people pay us. Yeah. Some people oh, pay yeah. Us. Yeah, some of them do. Some people pay us and only want their money. Yeah. Don't want to talk about them. It's your fault, player. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I'm just kidding about that. We can talk about Melvin's because they're a hometown store here. Mm-hmm. Now, I will, I, will, I will not tell. There's a girl down there that works, and I don't want to call her out, uh, notably because I don't know her name. Uh, That'd be the, you're safe, me to tell you, not telling you mm-hmm. what you've done, because I don't know who you are, but she knows us. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, this is a pretty cool chair. Mm-hmm. How much is this? And she starts looking, and she's digging, and she's all over the place. And I went, nah, you're, you're putting too much effort into yeah. this, because I'm not, I'm not buying it, and I really don't give a shit yeah. how much it is. I said, that was more of just, though, I was wondering how much a chair like this would cost, yeah. but now I don't wonder how much no, that chair costs. Not when you're, not when you're having, she goes, then why jazz? I went, I pissed. I went in there and pissed, and I felt bad because I'm, I'm, I'm stri- not going to buy anything. I'm strictly in here to piss. Yeah. And uh, I'm not buying this chair. She goes, well, I tell you what, don't tell Melvin I told you, but uh, after May the 25th or whatever, they're going to be like half price. Yeah. I yeah. Said, Shit, I may all right. Yeah, I'm still not going to buy it. I don't know. It looked pretty comfortable. Is it the, the lean back chair? Yeah. The camping looking chairs? Yeah. They're probably not called lean backs. You know what's weird is that this is the third conversation I've heard about those chairs in the last... You know, two or three weeks. I've only been in there twice in the last two weeks. And every time I was in there, I heard a conversation about those chairs. Well, they're hot topics right now. They are. So Facebook's doing another thing. Mm-hmm. Likes and don't like. So, yeah. so people blew up the chart this week with, initially it started off with 10 things that I don't like that everybody else does. Right. Then people, I guess, try to spin it more positively. 10 things I do like that everybody uh-huh. else doesn't like. Why? Why is there? Why is ten such a number? What happened to like the top five list? Because ten is so many. Ten's a lot. Like, like on that list of ten people that you've met, why yeah. couldn't it be five? I'm not gonna make thirty. Yeah, I know. I I was just thinking when you were talking. I've never met a single famous person that I can think of. So we're gonna do our list at five. Uh, do you have five? I've got five. I got. I got at least five in one list, and then I've only got like two, maybe three, depending on how. I look at that. On the other side. All right. I've got a uh, eight don't likes, and I've got a bunch, but I mean necessarily. Hold on a second. It's it's. Well, see on my likes, I'm marking stuff out because it's stuff other people like also. Right. The, the question wasn't. It was like that everybody else doesn't like, right. or most of the people don't like. Right. So go ahead. You start off. What are ten? <clears throat> what well, are five things you like that not everybody else would like? That most people like and I don't like. Is it? <sighm> I don't give a shit. What yeah, just whatever in? the hell. But, inspirational but, quotes. Okay, we'll go. I hate them. Okay, I hate inspirational quotes. Uh, Life is not about waiting for the storm to pass, but learning to dance in the rain. Now that only makes sense if you post a <laughs> selfie to go with it. 
You know, you making some duck lips. That that's how that's that's why inspirational quotes are are made in 2020. You're supposed to make this f the camera look. Yeah, especially if you're like single. She thought she was, so she did, or whatever the stupid shit is. Yeah. She thought she, she could, so she did. I don't know. You know, uh, I'm beginning to hate this microphone, too. We're going to have to upgrade We're gonna upgrade our shit. Don't quit your daydream. That's the dumbest That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's dumb. Yep. Life has two rules. Never quit. Two, always remember rule number one. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they'd give credit to the person that came up with this so we could sell them. Uh-huh. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you learn. Oof. Oof. A river cuts through rock, not because of its power, but because of its persistence. When you come to the end of your rope, tie a knot, hang on. That reminds me of a friend. Uh, he talks like this. Uh-huh. That we talked about for the show last week. Uh-huh. Uh, one time, a friend of mine was taking a girl home after Cotton Eye Joe. Uh-huh. And uh, by friend, I mean me. And, uh, no, no, not me. There was a friend of mine, not his. I was okay. taking a girl home from Cotton Eye Joe. And uh, he said, let me tell you something, boy. Let me tell you something, son. You better hold on. You better hold on. <laughs> I had that Tuesday night. <laughs> oh, my God. Rock my world. Uh-huh. Hold on. Where, where, point, to where, point to that quote that you just read right there. Where's it at? That white with the black. Yeah. Colors. When you come to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang yourself with it. Whoever wrote that. <laughs> God. <laughs> That's the dumbest um, shit ever. Well, Happiness does not depend on what happens outside of you, but what happens inside of you. Oof. Mm. I hate inspirational quotes. Well, happy. So, talking about getting some sex. Sometimes. Read the, read the inside of you. Mm-hmm. Is, is that a penis then? I would, <laughs> I would think so. This is a happiness? Do it now. Sometimes later becomes never. Oof. Yeah, they're tough. That's that's we don't want to get yeah. too. Uh, Some, uh, that's a good one, Lucas. A lot yeah. of people like inspirational quotes. I hate them. I you know you know the only this is bad enough, but you know where I absolutely cannot stand I'm seeing lo- them. I'd love to hear it. Printed out pictures on your wall. Mm, that's tough. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, what's yours? I just, Give me one of yours. I just know I do get pissed. Up. There's nothing worse than a beautiful girl, and I'll be like scrolling Instagram, and be like oh, that's a pretty that's a pretty picture of that girl. You uh-huh. know, that's a good picture of that girl. Then uh-huh. then it'll have a. You know, two paragraph, you know, two verses of a song uh-huh. or a quote like that. I'm like, I would love to do that. Just that if I was, if I was creative enough, I would just post the biggest, sexy, like this, yeah, picture of myself, yeah, and then just put some, some lyrics. What song lyrics should I put underneath my selfie on the IG? Uh, I don't know. What if man. I put the lyrics to doing it, doing it, doing it well? Real cool, Jay. Just randomly put. <laughs> How's a how's a street girl gonna like it, Daddy? Nice and hard. <laughs> that would be that would <laughs> I would only accept that post with that quote on it. That was the only <laughs> way to actually do it. Yeah. Um maybe some fifty cent quote on it. Just a little bit. Yeah. Maybe just give her just a little bit. Yeah. Give maybe, me one of yours. Maybe I should just put a picture of myself just effing the camera so hard and put just the tip. Yeah. That's it. Just the caption, just the tip. I'll see it. where that goes. I just love it. Uh, craft beer. Is that something that you like that other people don't? I don't like it. I hate it. I, I hate craft beer. I don't like it. I, you know, I don't care if Jace Fraley, Don Asbury, uh, uh, Derek Rich, uh, Billy Fraley. I don't care if the, all the seventy-five people in the tr- Fraley tribe go to all these craft beer places. Craft beer. Don Asbury. I've told us on the show a hundred <laughs> times. He's zero for sixty-two, one for sixty-one. Actually, on introducing me to beer. But I, I just don't understand. I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel the need to be fancy. I don't need to buy a pass to. I'm not saying they're trying to be fancy because I love. Them. Uh, but all these people that go to these craft beer things, I don't need your fifty dollar pass to go drink seventy five different beers. Yeah, I like that blue can. It says Bud Light on it. Man, and when you go into a, if you go into a place that's got a bar and you just want to get a hamburger and a beer, right? I get it. That you might your thing may be that you brew beer, but how about having a Miller Lite behind the counter too? Where's your cool, where's your can of Coors at? Maybe a you know, mm. if nothing else, if you like the craft beer stuff, Budweiser full flavor, that's that's pretty good. That's a pretty good one to add <laughs> add to your list. Yeah. You know, I'd take that. I don't need that stupid little wooden tray with nah. the four ounce glasses that's got seven different beers in it that. 
this asshole that just come over thinks, hey, you might like these. No, I don't. I won't like them. I don't. I want. I want the beer that I liked. Rock Bottom Brewery in Nashville on Broadway. I hate them already. I've me, never heard of them. Me and Lindsay went up there one time. Was at the top overlooking Titan Stadium, overlooking Broadway, and I said, "Hey, buddy, give me a Bud Light." And she wants an Ultra. We don't have either. We brew our own beer on top. Yeah. I said, "I just walked past Bud Lights on the bottom floor. We can't actually take beer from the bottom level and bring it up here. We only brew our own up here at the top." Uh huh. Okay. Well, uh, what can you? What do you got then? We'll bring out the wooden tray. Uh huh. It's not a goddamn one of them tastes like Bud Light. No. Yeah. Uh, same thing happened. We went to Red Silo to watch Chris play one night. Red Silo is what I was trying to think of. I said, give me the closest thing to Bud Light you got. Oh, it's a skinny bikini. Yeah, why not? Bring me bring me one of them. We'll just call it we'll just call it Bud Light instead of skinny bikini. <laughs> and it well, it was not it was not very good. Yeah. I, I just don't love it. I, a lot of people do. I'm not I don't need uh, I don't need any kill you know, it used to be like, Oh, I drank um Killian's. Yeah. I drank uh George, what was that one? Uh Yingling or Yingling. something. Yingling. Everybody's got those beers. Like, yeah. like what's the point? Like, like, when you leave Jackson and Clay County, you've got these <laughs> these got these beer snobs. Don's gonna laugh because I don't I don't consider Don a beer snob because Don didn't drink right. for years. So he just has acquired what he likes. But there's these certain people that are from Jackson and Clay, Macon County, wherever. Yeah. And they drink Bud Light growing up. Hell, they've you know plenty of girls I know drink Bush Light, Natty Light. Uh-huh. You know, you you slumming around here. Yeah. But then you get like, oh, I only drank Yingling now. Yeah. Oh, I love Heineken. Yeah, <laughs> you know whatever. Yeah, Ying- Yingling is the is a good example though. Uh-huh. And they're like I said, they're they're was... awful. I can't stand them. I yeah. don't like the Yingling. I, I just don't. I mean, to each their I own. I used to have a roommate, and like we'd go get beer. Right. I I would walk to the cooler and pick up what I wanted, and we would go to this place where he could walk in and get a six pack and choose the six beer that he was going to put in yeah. the six pack. It would take for damn ever because I've not tried this one. I've not tried that one. I've not tried that one. I don't know which six I'm going to get. Holy shit. Pick up. You're, you're never going to drink any of them because every time we went, you take a drink of this one and, oh, that's awful. And you pour it out and then you get the next one. You might drink a beer by the time you get through those See, six. See, why I do that? I have no idea. I've done that and it's once. $20. Yeah. I've done that once in Murray, Kentucky with my brother in law. I got one called Sweaty Betty. Mm mm. It was all of it. It was every bit of the name. Mm-hmm. Most, the most uh, accurate description ever. That's awful. I've never had any sweaty betties. Mm-mm. I don't want anything about... Uh, I've had a lot of bees, but... I don't want anything about Betty to be sweaty. You know what I mean? No, uh-uh. Not even if she's been dancing all night. Uh-uh. We've had a bunch of yinglings. Yeah. If Betty's sweaty, just hose her down some, you know? Yeah. Hose it off a little bit, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, God. Yeah. Mm. So, how about, how about how about just buying six beers and that, you like, that you know you like? Yeah, you know. Of the I'm, same kind. If I'm, if I'm going to go buy a beer, I'm not... I'm not doing it to guess it whether I'm going to get drunk by the time I get done with it or not. Remind me of a quote Cody Canada from a live cross named Ragweed. Is it CD. inspirational? It's not inspirational at all. He says, I tell you what, my friend out in the crowd, you throw one more beer at Grady Cross, I'm going to kick your fucking ass. <laughs> he said, let's do like we did back in the old days buy a beer and drink it. Yeah, how about that? How about you just uh, drink the thing that you bought? He said, sorry for the F bomb, Ken. Sometimes you just got to call an asshole out every now and then. <laughs> That's yeah. when I knew that Cody Canada was a bad ace. He's a good one. Here's my favorite. I'd rather listen. I'd rather demotivational quotes. I love those. You can be replaced. That's my. I'd rather. Li- I'd rather look at those. It will probably get worse. I always believe that something wonderful will probably never happen. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, give up and try something else. There, that's that's better. Anyway, my next one is Chick Fil A. Overrated.com. A most overrated place I've ever been. That is a great one, Lucas. That is the it's you there's always a big line and it's always a big letdown that you've waited in line for that damn long to get something that it's just not that good. And I just need I just need the representatives on the outside. I don't I don't need to be on a first name basis with these people standing outside my car. Hi, I'm Trevor. Trevor. <laughs> what can I get you today? I don't know, man. Could you just back up a little bit and maybe just let me talk into the microphone? How about and then, that? Yeah. How about that? And then just let them hand it to me through the window. I don't need somebody stepping stepping out of a door over to my car. In an age where people are getting replaced with computers. Yeah. Chick-fil-A. Whoa. They've absolutely replaced every computer with a person in that place. Hi, I'm Donovan. What could you like? A little personal space, Donovan. Hey, Donovan. How about this? How about um, one? Don't breathe in my car. Yeah. Back up a little bit. Don't don't breathe on I me. I don't need that COVID from you. Trevor. I don't need you standing. Donovan. I don't need you standing there staring in my car and you know uh, 
looking around and judging me for what I've got in the floorboard. You know what? Those empty Bud Light cans don't, don't concern you, Donovan. You want to impress me? Be open on Sunday, pal. Yeah. Yeah. How about bring, give me some chicken on Sunday? Yeah. And how about, you know, if you're going to be uh, if you're gonna be known for your chicken so damn much, make it a little better. Make it better. Make it a little better. Wendy's is better than you. It really is. You know who makes better chicken than, than them? Burger King. You know who makes awful chicken? Burger King. Ooh. I don't know. I don't hate Chick-fil-A. I'm just not going to stand in for I don't. it. I've never thought, hey, I'm going to go get Chick-fil-A. Lindsay made better waffle fries Tuesday night than they've got. Yeah. I, oh, I don't I don't doubt that a bit. And they were not, and hers were burnt. Yeah. But Schneider Twain told me a long time ago, mm-hmm. if she cooks supper and burn it black, I better say, mm, I like it like that. Yeah, I and do. That's what I did. I, I, said, mm. I like it like that, Lindsay. Burn. I hate Chick Fil A. I hate reality television shows. I absolutely hate. It. I miss the age we grew up in the eighties and nineties. I miss. I miss uh, Family Matters. I miss scripted. I I, mem- I, I miss, married with children, uh, which I l- watched a marathon of the day. I, uh, Fresh Prince, Family Matters, even like uh, Mad About You. I'm old enough to remember Growing Pains, Full House. Oh yeah. Uh, f- f- did you say Family Matters? Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, even even Boy Meets World is better mm-hmm. than I, I just the can't. Wonder Years. Holy shit! And everybody's a little hot to try it right now that we haven't talked about Tiger King. Have you watched any Tiger King? I'm not gonna watch Tiger King. Okay, sorry guys. Yeah, I've watched one episode. Mikey said for you, he said get through the first episode because it's kind of slow. Then it then it turns on and gets crazy. Uh-huh. I don't see anything about that show that I. I mean, I, maybe we're in the minority. Maybe I've I need heard to watch it. I, every podcast that I listen to has talked about Tiger King, and I get the gist of it. They've all talked about it. I get the gist of it. I'm not going to watch it. Yeah. I don't care about I that guy. I feel like I can't see it now because I know too much about it already. I don't care about that guy. I don't care what happened to him. I don't care that he shot himself in the leg. I don't care that uh, What's-Her-Face put sardine oil on her husband's shoes and fed him to a tiger. I don't care. I just miss I miss episodic television. Yes. I don't, I don't care about... Um... Even MTV, when they stop taking music videos and replace it with real world and road rules. I don't, I don't love that. I don't... I don't re- let me some, like the Bachelor. Never watched it. No. The um, Big Brother. You're right. Never watched. Never it. gonna. Um, name me some more. Never watched any of them. Yeah. I've never watched any of them. You know. Uh, I watched Legends House on WWE Network. You know, I, I blame reality television on like Mari Povich and who who are those people? Mari Povich and Sally Jesse Raphael and people like that. Jerry Springer. Ricky Lake. Yeah, Jerry Springer had a lot to do with it. Everything. Yeah. That's the same thing. And I never watched any of those shows, and I never did like it. Yeah, those shows really started trickling in the late 90s, early yeah. 2000s, I guess. Late 90s, primarily. Those were awful. Then which, which brought in the next generation of 10 years of... Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't... I don't... There's nothing reality about any of these. That sir, teen, sir. teen mom... That's got to be the most mind-numbing bullshit that's ever been on television. That's bad. It's bad stuff. It's all bad. I heard Dr. Drew saying, though, that because of that show, every time it airs and every time a new season comes out, statistically, teen pregnancy goes down in those time periods. Uh, I remember Lindsay watching that and just me thinking, if if a man could get a case of domestic tonight, it'd be on Janelle. Oh, yeah. Remember Janelle? No. I just remember. I don't remember what she looks like. I couldn't pick her out. I just remember thinking, God, that she's a work uh, man, man. God, if I got her pregnant, <laughs> you know, right? I'd, I'd have caught a case by now. I guess. Yeah. Reality. Yeah. Movies. I just miss. The, I miss a good old wholesome. Yeah. Sit down and family watch re, uh, episodic sitcoms. Yeah. I miss it. I miss it. Uh, bands like Shine Down. You hate you hate those? I hate Shine Down. I hate that band Shine Down. Uh-huh. And every band that's like them, it's a, it's a angsty. It's still, it's they're still full of teenage angst. You remember, uh, uh, the Verve, or no, the Verve Pipe. They had that, but they're not like Shine Down, are they? They're a lot like it. It's the same thing. It's real. They're too old to be angsty like they are. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not. You're not fourteen or fifteen anymore. You know, cheer up, cheer yeah, the hell not, up. You're not, nobody's bullying you at school. That guy. <laughs> I just think about the guy that's, you know, wears a black t-shirt and black pants and wears those biker boots. It's got the silver buckle on the side of it and a <laughs> yeah. chain wallet. He's got, he's got four rings on each hand, yeah. you know, and he's got bracelets all the way up his arm. Yeah. And he's, he's sad still, you know, you're 45, but you're still sad about something that happened to you in high school. I don't, I, you know what that reminds me of? Tattoo what? artist. Yeah. 
Have you ever met a happy tattoo artist? I've never met one, but you know. Well, I've got tattoos, and I mean, know. I like the guy that tat- gives me t- tattoos. But he's sad, probably. Well, I mean, in. he's he. Nah, well, a little artistic angst. Uh, you know, and I'm not necessarily mean him because I mean, we always have pretty good conversations when when he's tattooed me. But mm-hmm. like, as a in a nutshell, like people he's worked around. Yeah, it's just generally a, well, it's a lot of black. Right. Uh. Uh, but it's a lot of bitching and whining and negativity. Like the shops are just kind of full of negativity right. in a way. No, yeah, like sad. I said, I'm, yeah, it's. I don't know why they're so damn sad. Cheer up, cheer up. I don't like them. Bands like Shine Down make me think of those guys. Yeah, those like forty-five year old angst, angsty teenagers. Yeah, I get it. Uh, my, the next one of mine can kind of be lumped together: camping and hiking. I give a shit about either one of them. I like the idea of it. But man, when it comes down to it, I don't want to carry all that bullshit out to the middle of nowhere. I don't want to put a tent down. No, I like to go. I like to go hiking on a like on a trail that goes up and loops around and comes back about half a mile. You know, that was I, fun. I seen a guy on Instagram it was like nineteen mile hike today. No. What? Mm-mm. Dude, there's days I'm 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 happy if we don't even drive nineteen miles round trip. Yeah, where are you going? Nineteen miles. You know what I mean? I'm going to go see something that you're never going to see. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. I don't get it. And maybe I'm missing out. No, first off, I'm lazy. Right. I'm just, I'm just, that's just admitted. And I'm just, what is there? What, what are we seeing? I don't know. I, I listened to a book this week. A guy was, he had to get flown into uh, this middle of nowhere, Alaska. He had to walk like, I remember he was, Seven miles to his from the river to his camp, and then he was another like three or four miles away from that in the middle of nowhere. And he said, you know, it's something about the the way the animals looked at him. He could tell that they had never seen another. They had never seen a human before. He was so far up there. Where that guy? Yeah. That guy. If I want to walk up a hill and in, into a woods, I'll just go up the bottom of my driveway and walk. Yeah. That's that's what I'm gonna do. I go to the bottom of the hill, get the man, come back. Yeah. Uh and nothing against that's like I made a that camping if I'm in a look, I'm gonna be a pussy. Yeah. Like if I'm in a like we used to go with the Mackies mm-hmm. uh in a in a R in a in a motor home mm-hmm. and there was a body of water close by. Right. Now if you're keeping me in a in a motor home or a nice camper, mm-hmm. Where I can go out and kind of have some beers and right. then go down to the water. And then go back inside. I don't mind it. Not get eat up by mosquitoes. I never was about that tent life. I, don't want I ain't it. too proud to say it. Yeah. If, I've done, I've, I've went camping and slept in a tent like two or three times. And every time I woke up, I thought, man, that would have been a lot more comfortable if I just slept in the bed. Yeah. And, you know, a couple of years ago, and this is not the reason I went, Jace likes to say that I'm a one and done. Or I think I went two years, though, actually. To on their, I might just went one to their uh, canoe trip. To the canoe trip on a Good Friday. Um, the first year, I never had been in a canoe, canoe or kayak either one. So they're like, we're going to put you with Jace because you don't have your own. We'll just put you in a canoe. Well, Derek and Clint and Butch and everybody else, they're kind of hanging out in the back, just kind of floating. Jordan's yeah. kind of floating. Everybody's having a good time. Uh-huh. I'm up here with, with Jace like we're going white water rafting or something. And he's like, hey, you got to hit it hard right here. Hit it here. Come on. Come on, sweetness. You got to hit it. You got to hit it. And he's and we're and him and Scotty's like in a two man race to get to camp. To, who's gonna set up shop? I guess first. Huh. I'm looking. I'm like, there's my hey, my friends are back here. And they're drinking beer and they're having a good time. Yeah, can let's we, slow down. What can the we, hell? Can know? we take? Can we hit another break right here? Yeah, I want to get drunk before we get there. How about we slow the gear down? <laughs> so, yeah. so Jason Scotty are having this two man race. Clint's like, about it. <laughs> How's it going up there? Huh? Looks like you're having a good time. <laughs> and you say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I love Jason to death. They just, yeah. it, but we got up to shop that night to set up everything, and um, I didn't, I didn't uh, pack enough clothes. Mm. And I'm sitting there in the tent, big rock freezing. in my back, freezing to death. I go get in the truck for a little while. It's always colder outside than what you plan for. <laughs> terrible, it's just man. always terrible. It's so terrible. I remember wrapping up in a blanket and going up by the campfire, and yeah. just rocking myself in a camping chair all night long yeah just hating life that, really that guy in the book i was listening to he's talking about getting out of his tent and as he was walking his clothes were freezing from all the or all the water that he'd exhaled while he slept that night it all stuck to his clothes and as he was walking his clothes were freezing i thought <laughs> who in the hell wants to do that besides that guy i don't know <clears throat> i don't really particularly like kayaking um 
I've lot, never been. Everybody loves it. I've Every, never been. Er, literally everybody I know loves it, and you've never been, but maybe it's because I got a cheap one. I got one of those $199 deals from Tractor Supply, which is Still ain't cheap for something you don't do very often. Yeah, I'd say that's a two hundred dollar investment you made. To- yeah, and my pillow, or not my pillow, but my seat doesn't have much of a padding on it, mm-hmm. and I'm fat anyway. Right. So my ass gets to hurt in about an hour into this, mm-hmm. and once you ask, it was numb. It's just kind of downhill from there. You're always trying to, and you can't get up and walk around out in the middle of the water. No, you, and it, the little boat. You, I don't know. And I missed her assessor anyway. You know you. I, oh yeah, I've got too much shit going on for me to get it in and out of that thing. Yeah, I jump out into the water now. So I've got this Bluetooth speaker, and I've got this cooler of beer, and I've got my phone in here in a, in a Ziploc bag. Mm-hmm. I got too much stuff going on. I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna piss on myself for the next <laughs> three hours because I'm not getting out. <laughs> I just don't love kayaking. Maybe yeah. I'm just maybe I'm just not a nature guy because I've already yeah. I, don't, I don't like camping. I don't like hiking. I don't like kayaking. Yeah, maybe put me in air conditioning and let me. Well, let's be a woman. Maybe know. we should jump over and do the things that we do like, so we're not just bitching this whole time. <laughs> Good idea. I also don't like wood bees, TikTok, or cold weather. I don't like sugar in my coffee, the NBA, NFL, college sports, and NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't say that I don't like TikTok, because yeah. I just don't. My wife had me on TikTok there for like 30 minutes of the night. She's like, watch so-and-so's video. I'm like, okay. And, and it was fine, but most of the time, and I feel like I got a pretty good sense of humor while you deep throat drink pants. Cool. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I put the wrong <laughs> wrong end of my mouth. Sometimes you put it in the wrong end. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no, uh, her uh, reaction, like she was laughing, which is uh-huh. usually the opposite. I'm usually find stuff funnier. Right. I'm sort of going, all right, Lucas Hickman, they're all right. Oh. And I'm just, I'm sick of going outside and looking. Wood bees, wood bees can kiss my ass up there in the log house like I'm in. I mean, you can't go outside to the porch. <laughs> oh, it, you're just yeah. trying to have a conversation, and there's 15 would be one <laughs> and dramatic ass Bayless. Ah, ah, yeah. ah, ah. And he had me out all day Saturday. I, I, all I wanted to do was Sunday, maybe. We went out at 8:30 in the morning, and we played baseball. Uh-huh. We played football. We played basketball. Holy crap! We played tag. We played hide and go seek. We played on the trampoline. We played in his car. Uh, literally everything. That, that is wild. Then that night at six o'clock, he's Lindsay called us. Called us. You know, she rung the little bell outside on the porch. <laughs> Supper time. Supper's ready. And so we went in, and he's like, "Nobody will play with me." Yeah, nobody ever plays with you, kid. <laughs> I said, yeah. "God dang, kid." Yeah. Oh God, you know what? Tell us some things you like. Kid. Well, things that I like that others don't. California. I love California. Who don't like California? Well, I don't know people think it's full of pansies, and, and I. It may be, but I like California. A lot of people don't like the state. It's got a lot of negative connotations. It's a beautiful place. Absolutely beautiful. We drove from San Francisco <laughs> down to San Diego on that stretch of that stretch of road right at Big Sur. Absolutely beautiful. <clears throat> and that that uh, painting over there is one that a woman from California did of one of the bridges we crossed. It's it's a beautiful state. I never I've never noticed that painting a day in my life and just it's been it's been there for more than a year. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll look at it. I'll yeah. leave. California, I wouldn't mind going once. It's beautiful. You know what I would tell you to skip, though? If you could drive the 10, uh, Highway 1 and skip Los Angeles, that would be the best way to do it. Absolutely. Just skip Los Angeles and drive the entire rest of the coast. It's beautiful. All right. Beautiful. Well, um... I don't think I've got, I think most of my likes are kind of normal things. Yeah, I do too. Mine are. My, I mean, you know, I can't say sporting events, obviously, you right. know, that's that's a normal thing. Concerts, it's a normal thing. Mm-hmm. I, I love the city as I'm wearing a shirt, the Grizzlies. Uh, I love Memphis. And, you Memphis, know, yeah. I just, a lot of people, I'll say, I'm going to Memphis. Oh, I hate yeah. that drive where I, well, you like Memphis? Well, I, don't, I mean, I ain't trying to go in the dark areas right. where there's no lighting and I don't want to get mugged. Right. And, uh, a buddy of mine lived down in Memphis for a little while. He worked there. He lived right outside of Memphis, but he worked in downtown Memphis. And he said that when he would drive into work of a morning, he'd pull off the interstate, you know, and, it, and he'd be sitting there to the sign. He said and there would just be droves of people walking and knocking on windows trying to get your attention. He said, you just sit there with your hand on the wheel never look at them. They'll be knocking on your window talking to you and you just don't look at them. Just, he said they're just homeless people yeah, well, I hadn't seen that side. I imagine there is, but I mean, the more that Nashville's been become overpopulated, I love Nashville too. I, I, when I see pictures of Nashville, 
online. I, 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 I don't know. I, I'm kind of like proud the way Nashville has become. You know, I, uh-huh. I'm, I'm proud that really the just a, our our whole state really. Uh-huh. I just love the state of Tennessee. Like we've got some of the coolest spots. I mean, because Knoxville is a is a cool city. Yeah, it is. And it's then, a lot of fun, especially Old Town. Yeah, I mean, we had we've had numerous times down in Knoxville, uh-huh. and then um, um, Nashville is just getting so big, but still at the heart of Nashville, there's so much history in Nashville with the Ryman Auditorium, yeah, and with music and just the such. It is. I mean, it's, it's just really cool to see Nashville. Even though it's overpopulated, and in Memphis, now that I've been going for a few years, like I can watch the Grizzlies game, and it has like local commercials, and you get it, and I get it. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I just I have a I kind of have a love for Memphis. I never thought I'd have years ago. Have you been to Graceland since you've been there? No, I went when I was twelve. I hadn't been since. I, I don't. I've I've driven through Memphis a time or two, but I've never stopped and look, looked around. I don't know anything about it. Uh, there's the Sun Studio. There's a there's there's all kinds of like recording studios that like Elvis and a lot of guys recorded at right. that you can go tour. Uh, it's just, it's just. I, it, I guess it's nice because Nashville, there's, there's people everywhere. Don't get me wrong. If I was a single man, I'd be going to Nashville all the time, every two weeks. You know, right. but um, it's just a change of pace when you go to Memphis. Mm-hmm. It's all, it's country and everything else. When you get to Memphis, you're hearing blues and you're hearing rock and roll. And uh-huh. it, it's just a different, it's a different scene. I, I really like it. I love the barbecue. Huh. Um, I, I really like watching bodybuilding shows. <laughs> And a lot of people don't like that. It's weird. It's really weird. It's the most like conceited, self indulgent thing yeah. that's out there. People just I mean, just juiced up, roided out monsters on stage, three hundred pounds and just straight muscle. It's weird. It's so weird. And I believe that's why I like watching it. It's because, <laughs> man, that is the oddest thing I've ever seen. Look how big that MFR is. Yeah. He's huge. And then you see the next guy, and you're like, holy crap, there's another one. There's not just one guy that done yeah. that. There's 15 on stage that do that. Look at those monsters right there. Would, and then they're doing the weird pose, and it's almost like they're up there dancing, but everybody's got to do the same thing. And you think, when you think bodybuilding, you think health and fitness and all this. Those guys are almost dead. They're just, yeah. they're like 15 minutes away from dying. They peak for that show, and they just <laughs> yeah. want something to drink and something to eat. They ain't, they ain't had a drink of water in 24 hours. They're so hungry. They're about to die. That's the most unhealthy. <laughs> that is literally the most unhealthy <coughs> athlete or professional professional thing that you could do. Yeah. And it's based around fitness. And and there's I've never nothing fit about it. There's never nothing. Nothing fit about that. I've never. I've never. Your heart's getting too I think big. they look ridiculous. They do. Yeah. But and you can't take your eyes off of it. You can't. I, I can't. It's yeah, like, I holy can't. crap. That's so weird. And then I want to say another one. You know, yeah. Arnold wasn't like that. Arnold was really big, right? Yeah. Arnold was huge. He wouldn't even make the top 50 bodybuilders now. Yeah. He just wouldn't do it. He was nowhere near the size of these guys. It's, a, But, I mean, it's an addiction. It is. It's an addiction it's, more than anything else. And you know what else it is? Uh, it's body dysmorphia. A lot of those guys don't see themselves for what they really are. They don't see that. You know, they go in there and they're, they're absolutely, most of those guys would say that they don't, they don't. They still don't look right. They still don't look good. They're still not perfect. You, you think in your head, I want to get the biggest chest. I just need a bigger chest. I'll, my shoulders, though, my shoulders need to be bigger. All but my traps. But now all this is so heavy. What about my forearms? Shit, they ain't coming along, and my legs that are never going to be right. The, every one of those guys up there just, they just have a body dysmorphia thing in their head. I guarantee you, every one of them do. I'm it's sure. so it's so weird, and I love it for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so weird. Picture, old pictures of Tom Platt with just the just a weirdest dude you've ever seen, just doing squats and yelling at the camera for no damn reason. I mean, yeah. he's he might have five hundred pounds on his back, but he could do that. He could do that twenty times, but he's yelling at the camera just to make a good just to make a good picture. I guess. <laughs> I've I've noted several times on this show I've I've never understood and even when I was at my absolute best shape it was yeah. it was more high reps lower yeah. weight because you want to get more lean to look and right. I've, I've never understood the my God I'm gonna sit on this bench and I'm gonna put 650 pounds and drop some fucking chains on both sides Ugh. and you and you Ugh. yeah you 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 busting blood 
socket, you know, your eyes are doing one rep. You've tore a, <laughs> you've tore your damn peck off your shoulder and it <laughs> wadded up into your nipple on the other side and your damn bicep curled up. Now it's in your shoulder. Yeah, and holy just, crap. I've got this purple, I've got this purple blob that's starting. It's just full of blood that's coming across <laughs> my chest. And you know, I'm get every time I stand up, I get real dizzy and I can't lay on my back now because my damn neck's so thick that I can't breathe whenever I sleep. I've but got, I got sleep apnea, but I got one more. Than anybody else could get. But you know what I did? I, I lifted 700 pounds. <laughs> I got you know, it. I'm a strong son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm a strong son of a bitch. Yeah, but can you jog over here with me? No, no. Did you ever see that video of uh, the mountain from the Game of Thrones fighting? Not fighting. He was sparring with Conor McGregor. No. Half Torbjornson's like, he's six nine, 400 pounds, and Conor McGregor was when he was fighting at 145. She was just slapping at Connor, and he got out of breath, and he had his hands on his side. He never moved more than three or four foot. And, uh, uh, I don't know, man. I talked to a guy one time that was a power lifter, and uh, he said, you just don't understand what I do. I said, no, I get it. I get, <laughs> I get what you do. You go pick up real heavy stuff, and then you put it back down for one rep. Yeah, it, that that's not what it is. Good you just you, don't get it. I said, "Well, tell tell me what it is." He said, "You wouldn't understand." I said, "Well, just give me a try. Give me a try, and we'll see." Do, what's this right here? This is this is Thor fighting Conor McGregor. He's huge, right? Very big, and he's just trying to get a hold of him. Well, they got him there. He's not going to keep him, though. He don't know what to do with him. This don't make. This ain't going to make good radio. <laughs> but anyway, it's real good. He gets out of breath. Yeah. So I, I guess the next one I would put is uh, ju- just my collection of like memorabilia and stuff I've collected over the years. Yeah. That nobody gets. That right. nobody gets. And like even James. James is one of the harder people on me. He'll walk in and be like, I guess some of this is cool, you know, but like. I mean, I've met famous people a long time before I ever started collecting anything. You mm-hmm. know, it was just like, hey, you know, we might take a picture on an old camera, early stages of a camera phone or something. It wasn't until me and Waylon started going to things. The times are so accessible. We started going to all these caravans and whatnot. And of course, they're not hardly as accessible now that they've got better. You know, back used to you go to a Titans caravan or a Titans training camp and you could talk to Delaney Walker for 15 minutes because nobody else was there. Mm-hmm. You know, there was the. Uh, bandwagon fans, I guess, have come out, but um, yeah, it's something. It's like it's not. Uh, I, I'm. Don't, I don't want to put you on the spot, and I don't want you to have to explain it because it's your thing, and and if you like it, you like it. But do you remember what the thing was that made you uh want to start going and meeting people like that? No, I don't really. I don't remember. And people's always like it to the to the. To the Earliest times would give me shit about it because I sit there and talk to Chris Knight forever. Uh huh. I guess Chris Knight is a is a musician that we you know listen to a lot. You know, and he yeah. he, he feels like one of us. So Brent never been one to make fun of somebody. <laughs> you know, he just let it. Yeah, let the, everything slide. Yeah. No, he give me a hard time. He's like, oh, oh remember, no, me, really? Remember that one time? That. You, one, <laughs> what time? Remember that time you slucked off Chris Knight when you met him? I'm like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> 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 you know, I just uh. I, yeah, I don't know. Me and Waylon started to enjoy doing that. But after a while, you kind of get – I met some people, and they kind of like, well, no, the Titans do this, and the Titans do that. And it's always been a fact of – like, I can't think of anybody I've met I never really wanted to meet. Like, we've made fun of the show. I'm like, yeah. it ain't like it was Screech at Baggage Claim. Right. You know, it ain't like it's – it's it's not like, oh, God, they're, they're famous. Uh-huh. I got to go meet. It's got to, like, have some importance right. to my life. Like, it's got to be a – uh, an athlete that I like watching, or mm-hmm. a musician I enjoy hearing. Like I said, I'm I'm not going to chase down Thomas Rhett just because he's famous. <laughs> right. You know, I don't give a yeah. shit about Thomas Rhett. You know, I was I was thinking while ago when you I don't know if you were talking about it or or uh, or what, but the uh, the only the most famous person that I've ever met was John Natale Jr. And I guarantee you, you have no idea who that is. Idea. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Here here's another thing that I really liked it. <laughs> I don't know that I would say that most people don't, but I really, really like seeing people get scorpioned. Do you know what getting a scorpion is? Mm-mm. That. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> where, where somebody tries to jump something, 
And then, <laughs> and then they land on their face and chest, and their feet, their feet come over their back and turn them into a scorpion, yeah. <laughs> like that right there, that scorpion Ooh, look. Yeah. I don't know what it is about about seeing <laughs> seeing. Uh, <laughs> oh, athletic! I almost had that one, Mom. I don't know what it is about seeing. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing people land face down and then their feet, oh, <laughs> feet coming up over their Poor head. Kid. That I think is so funny. But that is, that's literally. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you're having a good time with this one. I don't know why I think that's so funny. But that's, uh... <laughs> to me, that's one of the funniest things that can happen to somebody. You know, it's just. <laughs> As long as as long as they don't get hurt, you know, too bad. Like that, <laughs> too bad. Yeah, yes, that guy's all right. That guy's fine. That yeah. guy that was, that guy's not going to be. You know, uh, it's going to leave a mark, Tommy yeah. boy. Yeah, that didn't uh, work out too well. This guy's trying to hold his pants up. I kn- <laughs> <laughs> Somebody tell Rusty Eats that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> you know, just just go watch Scorpion Fails on uh, YouTube. It's hilarious. That's <laughs> clips. His man, shirt. I'm sorry. His shirt says "Warning: I do things." Oh, it should say "Not very well" under. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. I don't know that. I don't know that other people like that as much as I do. But I really, really enjoy that <laughs> for some reason. You know, going back to that uh, <laughs> about my collection stuff, though, it's kind of yeah. it's kind of the like the point. Like people see the stuff like that's pretty cool. Yeah. But, right. Like it. And, and even, didn't want to give you shit about have you got it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I've went to like meet and greets or something, or like somebody be like, oh, "Why didn't you tell me I went with you right. to that?" And I'm like, "No, I'm actually so embarrassed to go. I try to pretend like I don't. I'm, like I'm, I didn't do it, and then I'll tell you afterwards." Yeah, like I, I, it's almost to the point of like, yeah, I went and met Chris Stapleton at a thing at the George Jones Museum, but I was hoping I wouldn't see anybody because I, everybody else feels like it's dorky. Right. But then they're like, "Oh, that's so cool! You met Chris Stapleton. How'd you do that?" I'm like, "Well, wait in line with other people, right. you know, for a meet and greet, not stalking, as everybody would like to used to say. Uh-huh. You know, not uh, for people that are just now listening to the show. I got shit for going to meet and greets. Like, oh, where'd you stalk them at? Oh, I don't know. Maybe if you read something besides topics or the Citizen Statesman, you would know <laughs> that we have this thing called internet when yeah. you when you upgrade off of a dial up." And it says on their Twitter accounts, which you'll, you'll get one of these days here in five years, you'll figure out what Twitter is. Yeah. They'll say, hey, I'm going to be at Barnes & Noble in, uh, in Madison. Come Signing see me books. from 12 to 2. Yeah. Look at DK stalking that guy in a public bookstore. You know, it's... You, didn't, you never went to four-wheeler races, and I don't think you had any... I don't think you had any desire to do that at any point in time. No. Not really. I like riding them. Just, yeah. Not competitively. Uh, and it's just uh, like I said, it's it's neither here nor there. But people have, you know, I get they a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions about that. Yeah, and, and so be it. It's fine. Yeah, but it's like I said, once you put it in perspective of it's Shaq, you know, it's so and so that I like and I've always liked. And what's cool to me is like when I think about how much I love wrestling as a as a kid, and then my friend Chad does these conventions. I'm like looking through a contact list today. I'm like, oh, there's Jake the Snake Roberts. <laughs> right. I've got Jake the Snake Roberts cell phone number. All right. Tell six year old me I gotta check the snake you know. You know, uh on that list of most people like and I don't I should have put wrestling. Yeah, because everybody Because everybody that we've ever talked to on here has been a wrestling fan. Which means that I'm in the minority. But you were though. But, like I, I there said, was a young me at one point in right, time. But what I'm telling you, it ain't like we're sitting here talking about why is Braun Strowman the champion and why is Seth Rollins not or whatever. Like we're talking about what we liked as a kid, we're not we're not sitting here geeking out about current stuff. I don't know, man. There's just been some conversations on here that just go so deep that I just I'm just oh man, there people really like this, and I I'm, but it's just it's just, it's no different to me. It's it's somebody our age. It's no different than saying they love the Ninja Turtles or GI Joe. Right. It's it's what you grew up on. Right. It's it's, it's, however, it's a part of childhood. However, a lot of people. Don't continue to watch Ninja Turtles or GI Joes after <laughs> a, as an adult. Yeah, but they don't talk about them. They just talk about the old ones. Right. Yeah. I've never debated new wrestling on here ever. Have I said? I, I couldn't tell you if you did or didn't. Have I said thirty years ago the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan was a sight to see at WrestleMania six? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Huge. I, yeah, I get it. Ah, uh, you got another it. one? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, I didn't. That was it. That was my. Th- that was the only three that I had. Hey, one that gets frowned upon that I still do, and anybody that really, people from bigger cities can't comprehend it. I don't think, and 
some people that don't love living in the country that move from here don't yeah. get it. But whether you're drinking or not, riding the back road, ride the back road. Right. People don't get it. Like I was telling a girl at work the other day, I was like, I'm gonna, I think I'm just going to ride a back road home. She's like, you're 36. And I said, I didn't say I was drinking. And why do I have to take Jennings Creek all the way down? Why can't I hit Haydenburg coming oh, yeah. on? Why can't I hit Brimstone and go through Pine Lick and Lump Lock Branch? And the best route that somebody's like, what's your favorite back road? I was like, I love the one where I pull out of my driveway and go to uh, uh, to uh, <laughs> Clark Holler uh-huh. and go up into Goosehorn. Then go down Ward's Fork and then North, North Springs, and I go up Skaggs Branch. Then I go uh, into Skaggs Branch and down Hunting Creek. Then I come into Hunting Creek. Then I go back up South Fork and come back and go down Riley Creek. Then I come out and go to Lock Branch. Then I go to Lock Branch to Brimstone, down to Pine Lick, down to uh, Crabtree Creek, politically correct. <laughs> then I'm home and I'm buzzing. I'm passed out looking for a pork chop and some fried potatoes. That's a, not, that's a good evening, <laughs> that's, that's man. A good, that's a good evening. It's a long evening. It's a long one, yeah. No, I wouldn't take that one. But if I was introducing somebody to a back road, that would be it. That's it. That's the path you take. I mean, there's just something about riding down a back road if, with some music and windows down. Yeah, never gets old. Oh man, that's that's the best time too. Like just to turn on some music, and just let it play. Just find a good. If you spent thirty minutes prior, to, like the day before, getting ready to go, and just made a good playlist, yeah. stick it in, let it play for two hours. Is there an age limit to enjoying riding back roads? No. No. It's beautiful. You can see some beautiful stuff on the back road. Yeah, I used to love, I used to love taking four wheelers down down those old back roads, not those same ones, but well, some <laughs> of the same. Yeah, ones. some of the same ones. You know, and it, it's on a four wheeler. You take a trail, man. You used to be able to drop off behind Don Asbury's and wind up down in Brimstone, and then go from Brimstone. You could wind up either in Salina. Or you could come back and you could go all the way down to the bridge and then go back up and take Casty Holler and come back around. You wind up down in Sycamore and Pine Lick and then come Rough back area out. area there. Oh, man, it's beautiful. Well, if I'm 65 years old, God willing, still living, I'm going to be in a Silverado or a side-by-side or something, and I'm going to be riding around Haydenburg. Right. That's how it is. Yeah. I don't care if anybody thinks it's not cool or you shouldn't be doing your aid. I, I, I think... I think what most people don't get is it, it it's a waste of time. But that's the point of it, is to kill some time. Yeah, I don't know what people do. Like I don't know what kids do these days. Cause we used to used to ride back roads when we were younger. Yeah. What do kids do now? Play uh well, I would say play video games, but I I don't know that they do that. Watch. I think they do. I think they do. I don't know. Maybe. Losers. Losers. Go so, make your million dollars. <laughs> Loser. So in this quarantine time. Got a got a game for you here. Oh got, yeah. Got oh yeah. 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 Quarantine home. Now, yeah. I've come. Up, I like this game. Tell them what you did. So I came up with fifteen random names. Right. Now they're all friends of, our, of ours. Friends of ours. So you know, ninety percent of you guys are going to know these. Uh, I tried to include either best friends of ours growing up, uh, friends now. Yeah. Uh, listeners of the show. Uh huh. I, I wanted to include some more people, but like I wanted to include people that we both knew. So mm-hmm. like even like listeners like uh, Brandon Howe. Anthony Buck, Travis Fox, uh, Adam Jones. I thought about you guys, uh, Matt Mayberry. I wanted to say, like, guys that – I wanted Lucas to know these guys right. as well. And those guys, I mean, other than Matt, maybe uh, you don't know as well. So I've included 15 people. The only um, the only cheat code I have on here is I put the Allen Brothers as a whole as one. Oh, yeah. So one of these houses is actually going to have more than five. You're right. going to have eight. Right. Because um, the Allen Brothers will come as a, as a package here. So uh, quarantine – That's a pretty good package. It, I'll I, take it. I guess I could have put a, a house of just the, the Allen brother. Yeah, I could. I guess I could have done that, but I didn't. Uh, they're just the cheap. That's a that's a good package. I'll take that package. Well, you got to know what comes with them. So okay. Now, now that true. we're talking about the Allen brothers, the house is with the Allen brothers and Jason Lynn, mm-hmm. Elliot Brown, mm-hmm. Brad Craggett, and Chris Boone. Holy shit, that's a good house, dude. That's a fun house. That's a fun house. What are you gonna do with that group? Like, what what are some perks of living with those? 17 people on this that, that there's that there's no end of the conversation you can have because there's so many like well there's so many different groups there that you could uh it's team four I think. Three. team three yeah i don't know man we're just so much i'm just so much alike in so many different areas with all those people that you, everybody's just gonna get along i believe i mean if the island brothers aren't fighting amongst themselves then you should be in good shape because you know how brothers are brothers fight so if they're not fighting amongst themselves everybody should just be I mean, getting along 
Let me look back. So you're going <clears> to, <throat> I feel like Jason Lynn's going to be kind of a, the even kill one of the bunch. Uh, he's, yeah. he, Elliot Brown's going to be a pretty even kill. Yeah. Um, but then you got Chris Boone. He's as even as they come. Well, unless. he does like to get rowdy, though. Unless he got rowdy. And the problem is you've got Brad Craggett sitting there staring the shit. And a 15-year-old me to now can tell you Brad uh-huh. Craggett can absolutely stir the pot like nobody else and get a man in trouble. Yeah, but no, he don't do it anymore, not does like he, he used to. Does he not? If you're quarantined at home? Well, that's true. You know, he might. If he was getting a little rowdy, now he might stir some shit up. Now, we're quarantined. And now, now this- let me tell you, me and Chris Boone... We've been known to get out in the yard and fight a little bit whenever See? whenever the night gets red too late. Necks. Get a little redneck, you know. Blake Allen works out, so he's going he's gonna to try to tie up with somebody. We've been... Caleb's an alpha male. He's going to try to prove that he's bigger and badder than the, all you other boys you get to wrestling. And, you know, if I'm sitting there with just a bunch of guys and there ain't nobody around, there's not a lot of danger of anything happening and getting in any trouble, you know. Hickman might have a drink. Oof. You know. Oh, God. You know what's going to happen then, you know? Um, In- insanity. We're going to... You wanting to wrestle? Is that what you want? Is that what? Is that what we're doing, you know? Because I'll wrestle. <laughs> you wanting to fight a little bit? Are we slapping or what are we doing, you know? <laughs> what are we doing, Brad? Brad, you pick the one. You pick one for me, Brad. Ah, shit, I'm just going to sit here. Hang on. Take it in, you know? Yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can, you can lie to me and I'll believe it whenever I'm, you know, a little tipsy. So that's 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 quarantine. And this will take place. We're in a cabin in Gatlinburg. What are you going to do with that bunch? Well, I'm I'm just laying it out for you. Right oh, yeah. There. Elliot Brown has been one of my best friends since I was five years old. Best man each other's wedding. Yeah. Completely polar opposites. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we're going to sit here, and he's going to he's going to ask me. Uh, Elliot Elliot catches up. Right. Elliot talks to nobody. He asks me if I've talked to everybody. <laughs> so I'm going to be sitting here drinking a beer. While the other, Catching Elliot up on try, everybody. Looking at the other rowdy people going, yeah, I'll be there in a second. Yeah, I let mean, me finish Elliot this finish conversation. Up. And yeah, I don't know. And me and Brad, uh, me and Brad, when we're not on our supervised visits from mm-hmm. our wife, we tend to do dumb shit together. Right. But if you're quarantined, I mean, the thing is, here's the thing. We're in, we're in a Gatlinburg cabin. This is uh-huh. where the setting's going to be. We're in a cabin. We've got hot tub and, and golden tea, and we've got a ping pong table where you can play flip cup or beer pong. I mean, but you know, you got Ubers. Yeah, yeah, you're quarantined. You know what happened? What the problem is, though, whenever if Hickman starts drinking, the problem is I like to start wandering. You know? <laughs> yeah, you do wander. I'm a, I'm a wanderer. You know, I like to go. Yeah, I like to go over there and see what they're doing over there, and then I'm not going to stay there for very long. I'm going to wander around some <laughs> other place. You know, I'm so, not going to be good at quarantined if I'm. Well, uh, no, house number two is uh, they're going to keep you in line. Uh huh. Brandon Gregory. Yeah. Cucumber. Yeah. Your brother, Curtis Hickman. Yeah. Derek Rich. Yeah. And Jace Fraley. My God, you have no choice. This is your house. Yeah. I would say. Uh, this is your brother, your cousin, and one of the best friends you've ever had in your life. Yeah. I would say. Uh, uh, now, here's the problem. Again, what are we doing? Are we just standing around? Are we in that? Are we quarantined in that house with alcohol? Because if you're if you're with alcohol, you don't want to be with this bunch. Well, I don't know. Because Big Brother's gonna tell you. No, he ain't gonna tell me nothing. Oh, he especially, ain't gonna, <laughs> yeah. he tell me nothing. You know, you tell me shit. Yeah, he ain't telling me shit. It, ain't nobody telling me shit if I get drunk. You know, tell me nothing. And you know, you want Josh? Josh will have a good time with you. Josh gonna have a great time. Yeah, and you know what's really good about Josh? He'll put he'll push you away. He'll push you in a different direction. Yeah, you know, he ain't gonna. He ain't going to drag you in a different direction. He's going to give you a little gentle nudge in a better direction as you're going on. Well, see, and initially, before I randomize these names, I put put them in teams of three. Yeah. Or t- I had 12 initially and ended up with how many we got now. But I put them as like the wild ones. Yeah. The three wildest guys I know. Then I follow that with the three tamest guys that would right. keep you grounded. Uh-huh. So I put Josh in that group. Yeah. Even though, and hey, trust me, I've had enough nights with Josh that he's not the first of the three I would think of to keep you grounded. Uh-huh. But the other other guys on this list are such degenerates. <laughs> that yeah. Josh. Yeah. Um, by lack of depth <laughs> on that chart, he became yeah. one of the top three. Yeah. You know, Kurt. Kurt's pretty good time. Yeah. You know, 
Here, it's a pretty good time if night gets pretty late. You know what I mean? If nothing else, Curtis is going to laugh at everybody he's so a, hard. He's so happy. He's the happiest. He's the happiest I've ever seen whenever he's been. Every time I talk to Curtis, I feel like the funniest human being. I could just say nothing. I could say a whole mouthful of shit and nothing. You, make you feel so good. And because he, he laughs at everything. He loves it. Derek Rich is a good time. That Derek's like a underrated uh, good time. Right. Because Derek is kind of like you. He's off the grid. He don't have social media. Right. Um, I, I forget about him sometimes. Mm-hmm. Then when we get together and have a beer, I'm like, man, Derek Rich is a good time. <laughs> right. You know, he's a good time. And Clint actually got butt hurt. I quit going places with Clint as much and started going Derek. He's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, you, so you dumped me for my my more boring cousin. <laughs> I was like, it's a pretty good time, Clint. Yeah, you know, and sometimes, sometimes you just need a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you got Jace. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, I'll guarantee you, we're gonna get. Uh, well, first of all, there'll be no beer. No beer with Jace. No, it's straight liquor. It's straight liquor with Jace. J- Jace is going to invite all five of you and tell, you, t- tell you everybody how much they owe down to a penny. Yeah, I would say you're gonna you're gonna know you're gonna know how much it costs you <laughs> yeah. to, to get that cabin. <laughs> hey, motherfucker! This, yeah. this is there's there's six of us. So we're going to split this six and ways. One hundred thirty three dollars and forty two cents a piece. You know, <laughs> but he's a good time too. Need you, it paid by Friday. If you you know, we'll uh. What we'll do is we'll just get him, we'll get him sloshed, and we'll pick it out of his wallet and then give it back to him. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's option two, right? Uh, house one, house four. Mm-hmm. Curtis Hatcher, yeah. Curtis Rich, yeah. Which is already funnier than hell. I laugh so hard when I pull those two names out uh-huh. side by side because they always take offense if you call one of them, one of them the, the other, other one. Yeah. Then the Thad, uh huh. Uh, Curtis Rich is already going to be rolling over in his grave, right. thinking he's got to deal with Thad and Curtis uh, Hatcher together. Uh-huh. Uh, Jeremy Hammer uh-huh. and Brent Duffer. Yeah. So you've got four instigators. Yeah. Uh, a guy that's in law school uh-huh. uh, who likes to stir the shit. All right. And Jeremy Hammer. I'm going to say, uh, this, is on a, this ain't a bad list to be on because, you know, uh, well, first of all, you know we're going to get in a fight. Brent's gonna <laughs> Brent's gonna pick a fight. Brent's somewhere. gonna pick a fight somewhere. So we're gonna be in a fight. Now listen, here's what I'm saying. After you pick the fight, Jeremy's gonna save your soul. Yeah. And then when you get arrested, Rich got you back. Yeah, there you go. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Um Rich is gonna get on his high horse. He's gonna mouth off something. He's gonna drink a couple. And he's gonna get cocky about something. He's gonna get punched in the mouth. Brent's gonna punch <laughs> him right in the mouth. <laughs> Brent's gonna pour a beer on his head first. Oh, yeah. thing. That's Brent's first calling thing. card. He's yeah. gonna pour a beer. And Curtis is gonna get upset yeah. about it. Yeah, he's gonna get mad at it. Thad's and Thad and Curtis. Thad and God knows what Thad Johnson and Curtis Hatcher is gonna do together. Right. That that's first and foremost. Uh-huh. Those two. And that and when Brent's in the room, mm-hmm. Brent's gonna Brent's gonna make everybody awkward. He's gonna know some dumb shit about everybody. He's gonna mm. call you out. Right. He's gonna make sure uh, that everybody knows the worst thing you've ever done in your life. <laughs> make you feel like a tiny man about it. Yeah. And he's gonna pour a beer on the Curtis Rich's he's head. He's gonna pour a beer on his head. <laughs> he's gonna punch him in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but Jeremy might save all of us by the time we're done. So maybe maybe that'd be the way to go. That's a fun house. That's a fun house, man. I've had you could have a good time. time in that house. Curtis Hatcher is one of the most naturally funny people. And he can't help it. He, he just is. He just is. And then Brent is, I've never. Not had a good time. No. Nah, I mean, have I been awkward around Brent? Oh, a lot? yeah. God, I wanted, I wanted to pour a beer on Brent and hit him. Well, and. But you don't want to go down that, open you, that Pandora's box. Have really. you ever been, you ever been in a scary situation with him? Every, yes. Yeah, every time. Yeah. Every, <laughs> every time. Are they stories worth telling? If you can tell them. Yeah. If you could, if you all. could let people know about it, it was a really good time. And other than you, I might have more stories with Brent that's like, ugh. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like probably you and Brent are the top two. All right. And Mackie maybe now. Yeah. But um, then there's Jeremy. There's Thad. I mean, it's a good group. Yeah. Uh, house number one, Clint Fraley. Yeah. Derek Woolbright. Yeah. James Hatcher. Yeah. Don Asbury uh-huh. and Jeremy Mackey. Man, that's a good house. <laughs> that's a fun too. house. That's too. a fun house. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be a whole lot of there. Every one of these houses are so different, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and yeah. and for it to be randomly picked, yeah, it's random as hell. That was. Those are just such good houses because, you know, this house with Don and Clint in it. 
that's going to be some of the best conversations you've ever had. Oh, man. Another. Uh, and it's just, I'm going to have so much fun talking about so many different topics with those two it's guys. It's really all over the place. Me and Clint were texting last week. It was some of the best. It was some of the, like, I just loved it so much, just the conversation we were having. And it was just like, you know, six texts apiece between us. Best conversation ever. So Clint is my, this, seriously, Clint is my um, concert talker. Right. Derek Woolbright's my sports talker. Mm-hmm. Uh, James is generally whatever because we've known each other our whole lives. Don, we talk a lot of wrestling and sports. Mackie is just whatever Mackie's conversation. Mackie. Mackie's Mackie. Mm-hmm. So you're going to get a whole lot of You're going to get the Mackie, and you're going to get the MF and Walrus in yeah. here. Right. Yeah, GD Wars. Yeah. Uh, you got Clint, the Fraley Shuffle. You got Mackie, who's twerking on walls. You got Don, the Walrus. You got James, who gets pretty rowdy. You got Woolbride, who who can get pretty fun mm-hmm. on a six pack. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of James Hatcher's the only man on that entire list of people that's ever stabbed me in the back with a, a frog gig. Oh, yeah. I mean, literally. No, this not a. It's not a. He stabbed me in the back. I did something wrong. He literally put a frog gig in my back at one point. In time. Yeah, not a not an endearing uh, attribute to, for for I don't know. It was fun. To, I still was it. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. this is uh, holy shit. This twenty years later, and I'm still talking about it. Um, I love him to death, but Clint there with with uh, with Clint, they're gonna be like, "Hey, we can't tell anybody this one." <laughs> yeah. And then Mac, either gonna be a lot like a whole lot of don't tell anybody this. Yeah. <laughs> we always tell Mackie, "Love you." Yeah. But. Secret telling ain't your uh, it's secret keeping. <laughs> yeah, secret telling is good. <laughs> secret keeping ain't your strong suit, kid. Because yeah. yeah. he don't mean to. Yeah, but they, it just comes out. So him and Clint, Clint ain't gonna want to party with him. Uh, Clint wants to party with him, but then Clint's, but then he don't want then, to after it, he starts partying. Yeah, after like three hours of partying, Clint's be like, uh, eh, I probably done some stuff in front of Mackie. Uh, this shuffle here, I'm getting a little. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be. Uh, Having such a good time. Mackie's going to tell to me people. Yeah. Having yeah. a good time. Yeah. Uh, so what have I got to do? Pick a house? Yeah, man. You got to pick a house right oh, now. Oh, man. That, tough. That is tough. And if nothing else in house one, like when mm-hmm. you get bored, you can pour like a, a thing full of uh, Vaseline in a in a small pool and have like midget wrestling between Don and Mackie. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, Mackie. <laughs> I'm a goddamn walrus. <laughs> Uh, you know, if, if this was, if this was 20 year old me, it can be whatever year old year you want. But what I'm saying is if this, this is 35 year old, you know, if this was 20 year old me, I'm picking a house with Duffer in it. Yeah. You know, yeah, easily, easily. Uh, If now I'm picking house two, which is one with Brandon, Cucumber, Curtis, Derek Rich, and Jason in it. That's a good time, man. That's a good time. Brandon Gregory is nothing short. I have never had a bad time in my life around Brandon Gregory yeah. because he's always happy. Always happy. He, he I've never seen I've Brandon, never seen him not smiling in my life. I'd imagine when he done his cage fight and he knocked a person out and smiled at him. Hey buddy, hey you you know, and good it, fight. Picked him up, said, I'm I sorry. Lo- you know, my bad. His his optimism and his joy is kind of like like it's it's you can it's you just it's contagious it's contagious that's the word i was looking for thank I thought you it was. thank sorry. you for bailing me out yeah oh. it, I, I, I you know curtis is my brother you know so i'm telling you yeah that's you know after a little while we're gonna fight but you know we're gonna get over it and we're still gonna have a good time. I just laughed when I seen that list. I was like, that couldn't have fell out. That couldn't have fell any better. And in cucumber, yeah, it's like another brother. Yeah. You know, it's uh, and in Jace, literally like another brother. Yeah, because I've not, I'm 35 years old, and I've been around Jace for well, he's not 35. I was gonna say 35 years, but but he's 65. Yeah, so you're so, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy, you are aging quickly, Jason. <laughs> so uh, only person I ever know to leave parties to check, catch the nine o'clock news. <laughs> yeah, those are. Those are three of my brothers in that house, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that one. But gosh, there's just not a bad place to be. That it would be it would be fun if you could just drop in to each one of these houses for a little bit because that's yeah. that's a hell of a lot of fun. You get in that house, talk to Brad Elliott, Alan's brothers, Jason Lynn, Chris Boone. Well, I mean that's yeah, and I'm torn. Uh, I'm man, also- Boone, man, Boone used to play chess and then go outside and fight. <laughs> All right, I, I may have been playing. 
I may have been playing Weird. chess with his with his with his uh his girl at that point in time. I don't remember who I was playing chess with, but I know okay. we'd wind up fighting in the yard after it was over with. All right. That so, was just the fun part though. So I'm eliminated from house number two. You've picked it first. Now would I and um probably just because I've got uh, Damn, it's getting late. We're going to wrap this up. Yeah, I don't even know who just texted me. I feel bad because... Let me read it. Oh, never mind. It's, they put their name at the end of it. Um, okay, uh, just lack of people that I've known them the longest. I'm going to eliminate number four. I love Curtis Hatcher and Curtis Rich. Yeah. I've only, but I've only known them in their adult life. Right. I've known them growing up. Thad. Uh, Thad I've known for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Brent and Jeremy I've, I've been in the trenches with. Right. Uh, Jeremy knows... One thing I love about Jeremy Hammer to this day, he knows two things about me. I'll be his friend no forever. No matter what. Yeah. And I'm also a rowdy little son of a bitch sometimes. <laughs> right. He knows down deep I've still got it in me, and I think he still loves me for being me. Now, uh, we talk deep. Uh, on this trip, though, we've all been a little crazy. We're all a little quarantined. Mm-hmm. We're all wanting to get out and have some fun. I- I'm, I'm going to go to another house and... Tell Jeremy, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, so buddy. I'm, I'm about to get out of the house and raise a little cane. Yeah. And I don't want to do it in front of you because I respect you too much. Right. So that, that brings it to house one or house three. Now, uh, dude, that's tough because you're looking at, uh, for three, for me, Allen Brothers, Jason Lynn, you know, guys that I've known for quite a long time. You're looking at... Chris Boone was my best friend for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. We're still great friends. Elliot Brown, like I said, best man each other's wedding. Mm-hmm. Brad, I named my first kid after. Right. Waylon Reed, Brad Reed. Uh, man, that's that's a tough one. Yeah, because I'm having a really good time with those guys. Mm-hmm. But I still may have to go with House One with Clint, Don, Mackie, James, and Woolbright. That's gonna be a fun, fun house. House one is going to be such a good time. All those houses are going to be so much fun. I don't know which mood James is going to be in, but it doesn't matter. You can figure out, figure it out, and you can adapt. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you get fun. Uh, yeah, sometimes fun you get James. fun, James, and then sometimes you get a little negative, Nancy James. Yeah, sometimes. which is fun sometimes too, right? Yeah, but Mackie and Don, and- I, but you know the thing Clint. is, is his fun, James, makes up so much ground on that negative, Nancy James, that it's. It's yeah. a good time. I'm gonna say no, James. We don't want to play Pictionary. Yeah. No, we don't want to play. He will play some odd games. Yeah. He'll, you know, like he'll play some games that takes all night long too. They're all about some games like you yeah. know. I'm not. I'm like I'm beer pong. Let's go outside up. and play some. Let's play some competitive disc golf. And I don't want to do that because <laughs> we're gonna be we're gonna be playing some competitive disc golf for the next six hours, man. No, and I, I just wanted to hang out. I ain't about that free. I just want to hang out. Quarantine. Yeah. Uh, golly, I may have to pick. Just because there's so much going on in house three with the Allens and everything, they're going to be that. That's already a full house. There's a there's a lot of people in that house, but it's a good time. Uh, you know, yes, but I think I'll pick house one. I'll pick I'll pick the Fraley Shuffle. I'll pick me and Derek Woolbright talking about how much we hate uh, Coach Mac and James and Don. Don offered me all the craft beer in the world that I'm gonna piss yeah. on. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not drink it, Don. And the Mackey. We're gonna call. Mackie's dad at eleven o'clock. Yeah, and and Mackie's dad's gonna enjoy the hell out of it. Yeah, and so you brought up cucumber. We end the show on this. So good to hear from him the other day. Have you talked to him lately? I've talked to him lately. Yeah. Did you? Uh, he sent me a text and it just meant the world. It it was one of them weird deals where dudes can. It was weird mm-hmm. because I hadn't talked all, to him in a long well, time. We're all tough. We tried to, you know. Uh huh. Um, he just sent me a text Saturday evening. We, me and Lindsay were outside and mm-hmm. it popped up and it said, sitting here listening to Jason, Eddie, Gary Allen, and Chris Knight and others and thought, man, what's good about this music? Memories and the folks you listen to it with or stories and the friends you think of while listening. I love you, man. Th- hope you and the fam are doing well. P.S. When are we going to get to try out that man cave? Yeah. And I was like, man. Yeah, it's just good to hear from him. He just, he always just sends me just a nice little, a nice little, What's up? Just uh, letting yeah. you know I'm thinking about you, dude. It was so love nice. Him. I love that guy, and I, I do. And he, I'm glad you introduced me to my first boyfriend. You know, it's all I'm. It's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I think we've covered it before as to what happened, but 
I, I relate this to Shawn Michaels putting Kevin Nash in the WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> Shawn Michaels was having a good time, having a good run. Yeah. And, but he needed a friend. Right. And he saw Kevin Nash on WCW television playing Vinny Vegas. Uh-huh. Makes a cute few connections. He goes, hey, who's playing that Vinny Vegas character down in uh, Atlanta? Oh, that's, that's Kevin Nash. I'd like to have him here as my bodyguard. Yeah. He's like, so I bring him in. He doesn't know anybody. He's green to the business. He's like, we get hot as a tag team. And Vince McMahon says, hey, that big man's getting white hot. I think we're going to go with him. What? Wait a minute. It was my idea uh-huh. to bring this big goof up. And now he's getting to be world champion before I am. Yeah. Well, that backfired. <laughs> so in relation to our three-way friendship, me and Luke has been lifelong friends. Uh-huh. I've been a freshman in college. I meet Josh. Me and Josh make quick best friends. Oh, we're, yeah. we're, we're inseparable. You can't not. Make for every part that guy. of a year. And I'm like, hey, Lucas, there's this cat I need to introduce you to. You're going to love him. Next thing you know. I did. I did love him. Uh, Cucumber calls me in 2009 and says, hey, I want you to be a uh, groomsman in my wedding. I was like, yeah, absolutely, of course. He goes, hey, man, I want to talk to you about something. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, don't, I don't want there anything to be weird, but I, I thought about asking Lucas to be my best man. Are you good with that? <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't even know this guy. You didn't even know him. You didn't even know him. I introduced you guys. Yeah. How did you get to be better friends? Fuck off, both of you. <laughs> of course I'm mad about it. Yeah. I don't even but do wedding. it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we better do it. <laughs> that's fine. But yeah, that I was so nervous at his wedding that uh, or not, I wasn't. I wasn't nervous at his wedding. Uh, I was too drunk to be nervous. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> there was these big old steps, and I was my shoes were so slick that I slipped on them during the. Uh, I slipped and almost fell off the steps during our rehearsal yeah. of walking down. Yeah. And uh, the the girl I was walking out with said, I don't do that during while we're walking out. We were walking down through there whenever we were actually walking out the wedding. I'll be damned if I didn't slip again and almost fall down right there in front of everybody. Mm. She's so nervous. She snatched me back up. She felt me fall and snatched me back up straight before anybody ever noticed <coughs> that I was Clutch. even falling. I said, hey, that was good looking out. She said, I can't do this. I can't get all the way out here. My knees are trembling, so just keep walking. I was like, yeah. I I got you. Thanks for, thanks for getting me, but I got you. Well, I got you one better than that. Even uh, you had a solid partner. Yeah, they matched us. If you remember, they matched. I do us remember by, who by, they matched you by. Yeah, they matched us by personalities. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't remember who you walked with. I don't remember who I walked. With. I couldn't tell you the girl. I, I could tell you. I could tell your name. I'm not going to say it, but I can tell you. I'll tell you later. Who I walked out with? Yeah, I don't remember. I do. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't remember what she looked like. Really? Not, I don't. I don't know how the hell I don't remember that, mm-hmm. but I, I don't. And uh. So I remember everybody had an entrance, right? Mm-hmm. We were coming. Right. What's the name of that? It was about on the backside of Cumberland, the Cumberland River, right? The Tennessee House. Or Tennessee or, what is what river? Well, is it's that? the it's the Tennessee River, yeah, but Tennessee the, River. The, uh, I can't remember what his name. Like, ten, the Tennessee place or Tennessee house. It was or some big like fancy some, yeah. ass place. Beautiful, yeah, beautiful place. And we're coming down off this thing. We're coming down, and it kind of had like a circle, uh-huh. right? A little uh-huh. circle area. That's where they got married at. So we came down these nice steps. But every groomsman and uh, a bridesmaid had a little introduction. Yeah, basically when you're coming down, and uh, I just remember her not prepping me for what was about to happen. They're like Dustin and whoever, uh-huh. and she jumps up. Yeah, gives her body to me <laughs> like trust, trust fall. Yeah, but she jumps up and not even knowing, she's like catch me. Yeah, and I'm like shit. She jumps up and I have to catch her. Yeah, so and that, and a slick dress, slick dress with me. Not uh-huh. know, I've already been drinking. I mean, it's yeah. an open bar. Yeah. So we've been drinking whiskey all day long. Uh-huh. So I'm holding this girl catcher, and I look down at, with Lindsay, who was sitting solo. Maybe she was sitting with Kara, probably. Probably. No, as many go to hell looks as Lindsay Hamilton <laughs> Kennedy has given could me, ever give. Yeah, that was probably that was one of the top I've ever yeah. seen. And I thought, man, this girl's got me divorced. And I ain't even married yet. <laughs> you know, and yeah. I didn't even know it was coming. Yeah. She goes, "That was awful nice of y'all to have such a good night moment up there." I said, "Hey, I found out when you found out." <laughs> Right. Yeah, me and the world found out together, honey. Exactly right. Yeah. So she's that's a good time though. That's a fun. That's a fun wedding. That was I've been to a lot, and that was a that was a good. One. Yeah, they they put some money into that one. And, oh, yeah. and just well, I don't care where it's at. It could have been in Brimstone Parking Lot, but uh, yeah. uh, you talk about DJ and open bar. I'm there. Good time. I never felt like such a jackass the night before though, because the 
wedding rehearsal was in the Sun Spear, which is yeah. a fancy ass place, fancy ass dinner. Um, it was casual. Uh huh. Supposed to be casual, best I remember. Yeah. Well, their casual was a different definition than ours. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least you got the memo. Yeah. I came in in a pair of jeans uh-huh. with a dress shirt right. with cowboy boots. Uh huh. And everybody laughed me out of the damn building. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's Knoxville has a different different yeah. definition than what we have. Now, would I know that now? Now we would. Don't say we. You knew it then. Because you I didn't know it, but I asked. <laughs> I, I, I asked what that definition yeah. meant because Spell I thought. I thought maybe they don't mean the same thing that I would think. Yeah, I didn't ask nobody, yeah. and I showed up in a pair of blue jeans with maybe holy blue jeans at the time, <laughs> I, right. with a nice dress shirt because holy jeans were coming in at the time again. The Alan Jacksons were coming in, right. but I did tuck my shirt in, but some the nicest ass double H cowboy boots. I had the best looking cowboy boots for anybody. Oh, I guarantee you, <laughs> wet and rehearsed. I guarantee you, felt like such a degenerate. We're so, two hours in. We got to go. Well, that's all I had to say anyway. It was the last. All thing. right. <laughs> all right all right everybody thanks for listening we love you see you again next week